Hey everyone, welcome to Dallable Podcast, episode 89. This week we're going to be discussing uh, our top 10 most nostalgic nostalgic video games. Can get that out right? This week I am joined by... Hey everyone, Stark Gaming here. And um, it's a pleasure to be on this podcast. I've been wanting to do something with you for a while now. Hey guys, Ty Lord here from Ty Lord, the, the YouTube channel. Happy to be here. I'm glad I get to t- uh, come on your podcast and talk with all you guys. I don't think I've ever sat on the same uh, 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 table or, or uh, chat room with all you guys. At once. It's, it's an honor to be here with all you guys. Hey, Great White North, a.k.a. Uh, Jason. Um, love the stream. And I've been wanting to do a podcast with other people and get to finally do that with you and everybody here. Great to be here. All right. And so the person that actually suggested this topic tonight and what inspired me to grab these guys because I value their opinion and I'd love to see what they talk about. Hi, I am Kid Halo. I make music, um, play games, mostly everything you can think of. I do it. And it's an honor to be on this podcast and thank you for having me. All right, guys. So of course, we're going to be talking about our most nostalgic video games. This doesn't actually have to be our favorite games of all time, but the games that bring back those feelings of joy, memories of friends and family. And, you know, of course, we're going to start with our number 10. So, okay. um, So number 10, just got to look on my um, computer real quick. Uh, is Spider-Man. Uh, I, this, uh, the 2001 version, I believe it might be 2002. I can't remember. But um, I played this game a lot in GameCube, and I played it with my friends a lot. Um, it wasn't a co-op game, but my friends would help me a lot, and it was just a lot of fun playing it with my friends. We call it like a beat 'em up game, I guess you could say. Um, of course, you play Spider Man, one of my favorite characters of all time, and you just go around beating up baddies. <laughs> so, is this the one based off the movie or the actual? Uh, which system? Yeah, m- movie. On uh, I played it a lot on GameCube. I believe there was a PS2 but... version as well. Yeah, that's the one yeah. I played. Yes, mm-hmm. there was. I believe Great it's game. on PlayStation 2, GameCube, Xbox. I don't know about anything else. Mm-hmm. Maybe PC, but it wasn't the same exact version. Definitely that game was the game that uh kind of started really the open world Spider-Man games yeah. within the depth of what we got. It's crazy, too, how every... Like a, like a lot of generations have their own Spider-Man games. Like there was a Spider-Man 1 and 2 on PS1. And then Sean has his, uh, he, uh, he must have been really young when that came out or not even born yet. But he has that uh, Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, the, the, the PlayStation 2 version. And now there's a new Spider-Man 1 and 2. Like the, mm-hmm. And it seems like every generation of those are solid. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The newer right. ones are really cool too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably oh. in twenty years, all the kids; those will be like the standout things. Like in twenty <laughs> years, the kids will say those are the nostalgic, <laughs> the nostalgic games. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine the whole Back to the Future thing? Yeah. It's yeah. Like, oh yeah. Look, look at look at my amazing Spider-Man game, and it's like, <laughs> what you have to use your story. hands? <laughs> <laughs> That's a baby yeah. <laughs> yeah. Number ten was uh, X-Men from Sega. Uh, I remember that because it was the first time we got to have a really good X-Men game. Mm-hmm. And what's what was unique about it is if you played it on easy, you didn't get to finish the game. Like, you know, it was like one of those what? things where we didn't have the internet, so you got halfway through the game, you beat Apocalypse, and it's like, oh, you, you won. If you want the rest of the game, you got to play a little harder. And um, so it was unique, you know. Um, the graphics were amazing. Th- that opening theme song was like absolutely just it, it hit right. And even even today, like when I think, think about it, it was it was a little tough game, but it was a game that really stood out to me. And I remember like you know inviting friends over after school, hanging out on a Friday or something, and playing this game. And it's it still holds up and to me, you know. Yeah, that's always the best having friends play games with you I, that's my yeah. favorite part about video games is just you know how to play with your friends um so is that game like mortal Kombat? like it's a or is it like the um ninja turtle one like you go across, it's side scrolling action uh, yeah yeah side scrolling yeah. okay mm-hmm. that's the one for the genesis or mm-hmm. 
Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because I remember if that's the one that you kind of start on in a danger room or something, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, but this was definitely better than like the Spider Man and the X Men with the uh, against Arcade. Oh. Yeah. That game. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I played that game so much, but it's so awful. It's so hard. Oh, man. The one thing it has that rocking on, at least on the Super Nintendo, it has that rocking intro, like it's like an electric guitar. Like yeah. <laughs> it's, it, the sound yeah. is good. <laughs> Mm. You remember the um Spider Man and Venom game? I think it was on Super Nintendo or Maximum Carnage. Oh, was it yeah. Maximum, Maximum Carnage? Carnage? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, too. that's a good one. Yeah, it seems like Sega at the time had some really good bangers as far as what they were doing with like certain series or uh, franchises that they got the license to but i mean and then and same in turn you had this other other games on the super nintendo mm -hmm. that did the same thing so it was like hit or miss but you got that yeah. rocking uh music on the genesis though mm -hmm. well, well when you think about it in in that game they innovate some stuff that you didn't even think about because there's one where you have to beat defeat a virus by resetting your system and that was something no one knew what? to do back then you hit the reset button, start uh, the game over, uh, and the virus is gone. <laughs> oh, well, that's, yes, wow. that's yes. before that's before Metal Gear Solid, huh? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dale, you Player two. Well? Yeah. Michael Mantis. Oh, yeah. that fight. Oh. The great thing about that too was like if you played any previous Konami games and it was on your save data and it was like, oh, so I see you like Kona uh, Konami games and Suicoden. Uh -huh. oh, Oh, wow, really? What? <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. great. Well, I guess speaking of Sega, I'll go to mine. Sega's Castle of Illusion for Game Gear here. Uh oh. I got it still. My Game Gear doesn't work, but I still have all my games. What's that awesome. actually? My, um, I never had one as a kid. My dad got my sister one one year because I already had a Game Boy and a bunch of games, and he thought she would like games. She's not really a big gamer like I am, but she liked that Game Gear. But I remember I would play her Game Gear when we go on road trips, like you'd hook the the cigarette lighter. Because if you use the batteries, it runs out in like a half hour. But you have the cigarette uh, adapter. That Game Gear, like that, it brings back a lot of nostalgic in itself. <laughs> this is like it was so cool. It looks so good compared to a Game Boy. Like back in like the late 80s or early 90s, whatever it was. It looks so darn good. It almost looked like a Super Nintendo or a Genesis. It was that Sega Master System, how uh, that which looked really good at the time, and uh, and it had a TV tuner on it. And like, wow, you can watch television on the Game Gear. It was such a cool little thing. But the one that stuck out the most that my cousin and my sister and I would pass it back uh, back and forth around in the car when we would go on road trips was Mickey Mouse's Castle of Illusion. I'm not a big platformer guy, but um, like other than the Super Mario games, but this is probably my favorite platformer other than the Mario games. It's so charming. The music, just every time I hear it, it's like that nostalgia, like every little track in here, it's little themed levels. Like there's like a forest theme. There's like a, a giant world, like with toys and all that, or like, or, or like your miniature in like, like a house or something. And uh, just really charming little levels. Or like, there's like a candy level where you're jumping off chocolate bars and, 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 and uh, cupcakes and stuff, mm -hmm. and it, it's and it's really really good control. Like it, uh, Mickey Mouse can bounce on him with his butt, I think, and he can find little <laughs> hidden treasure chests all over the place. But man, this was like so charming to me. We'd play this all the time, and it, um, and I hadn't played it for years. And a while ago, I was watching a video on it, like someone was doing top ten. I forget who it was. I'm sorry, but they. Put it, I might have been Game Sack was talking about it, and, and they brought up this game, and I heard all that music, and it took me back. Like, wow, uh, this game was so freaking charming. Like, uh, just thinking about it, like, brings a smile to my face. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusion, developed by Sega and published by Sega. See, I missed you guys that ever one play that? later. I, 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 okay. I, I missed it back in the day, but I didn't play it later on. Yeah, it was yeah, good. and I know it's. I never played the Genesis one. I guess it's a lot different than this, but. Man, I, from what I played of the Genesis one, I like this one way more. I think it's the same as the the Master System. And although although the Genesis one looks way better, of course. But I think there's one on the Super Nintendo. If that's what I'm thinking of, 
there might be a few of them. Yeah, because yeah, I know there's a bunch of remake of it too. Oh yeah, there was the recently a remake, or not recently, probably like five or ten years. Yeah. Yeah. I know there was a remake on like PS3. Okay. Yeah, a lot of those Disney games were great back then. I mean, yeah. Even like the Beauty and the Beast or like the the girly would be type games were really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess even the like the Little Mermaid game is supposed to be a banger. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. I know it gets made fun of a lot, but. (laughs) Aladdin's a good one, I think, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Speaking of that, when I have it on Game Gear. And it does some amazing things, like as far as the graphics, like some of those Disney games, I don't know how they do it. Like they really push the the hardware, but oh, that Aladdin, like, yeah, I go, yeah, I got it. I was going to do that for, uh, uh, for Ace's Disney thing, but I couldn't get the darn game gear to work. To work. Uh. <laughs> but, but, but that game has like, it has like a, when you walk, scroll past the buildings, you can see like the the buildings like in three D, like the side of the buildings. It's really cool looking for like an eight bit bit system. That that Aladdin game looks fantastic. Yeah, they really capture the animation, yeah. especially yeah. back then, which yeah. was really neat. Animation or just sprite work in general, uh, yeah. what mm-hmm. they can pull off. Yeah. Except for when you try to play, uh, was it Street Fighter? Alpha two on the Super Nintendo. That was pretty. Oh yeah, that one. <laughs> Which was, it was pretty impressive, but it had yeah. that that bullshit. Uh, or pardon my French. It had that uh that that load that that pause before the the fight. <laughs> yeah, and they cut off some of the animation too. So yeah, it's, yeah, like, yeah. It was a little choppy, a little bit, man. Yeah. Remember, um, Street Fighter Alpha three on the PSP. Yeah, that was, that was pretty one good. Of my favorite. It was like Max or something, or yeah, uh, Alpha yeah. Max. Yeah, yeah. I'm so lost with those games. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly That's... played the Super Nintendo ones. <laughs> well, might as well start with the, the most cliched ones. Super Mario Brothers Three would be uh, one of my top ten uh, nostalgic games. Also, one of my favorite NES games. Didn't want to try to mm-hmm. go too far with my favorite games, mm-hmm. but there's a little bit of a meaning with this one uh whenever i was i guess what it had been don't remember the exact release date but i think i was like not even 11 years old and i was doing the paper route you know getting money and that it was my first game that i earned by myself yeah the NES. i thought i wanted to get this game i want to earn it played it and i couldn't stop playing it when i was a kid but Every so often, I'll go back to it, but it's just that mm-hmm. feeling of uh, of that game that boosted everything that you loved about the other two Super Mario games at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, expanded the story a little bit more. The graphics were so good for its time. Music, the gameplay, the everything. Like they just upped it up, made it one of the best Super Mario games to this day. And again, the nostalgic feel of it is every time I play it or even look at it, and somebody yeah. talks about it, I think about that was my first game I bought with my own money, and yeah, that's the reason why it's definitely on my list. So, yeah, I know that all of us will like <clears throat> remember the commercial that was the wizard with uh, yeah, letting that's us know true that, too. Oh, that's yeah, that's super why. Why. <laughs> coming out. Um, yeah. But that was a game. You remember we... there was. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You remember there was a show, Super Mario Brothers Three. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I remember that. that. Yep. That was one of my favorite shows, and it's one of my favorite shows to watch now. I yeah. watched that. Like I would every night, because uh, when I go to bed, I can't have um, just a fan going. I need to have that too, but I need to have a show going too in the background. So I would always put that show in the background. There are definitely worse shows to put on the background. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. have, <laughs> have two TVs going, like you're playing one game and watching the yeah. show. Oh, that's, you don't take any, oh, that's, something that's that doesn't take your right there, uh, yeah. attention so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. 
Um, like when you're playing like the grindy role playing games, I love that when you put something on to watch and you're just like level grinding on like an RPG, it's the best. <laughs> I do that yeah. all the time. Yeah. Big <laughs> RPG hero mind. over here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh I used to I used to have the uh that Nintendo power that came out that had like the, the basically the whole strategy guy. And I would use yeah, that until a... Mario and <laughs> it's like, yeah. What? I remember oh, doing so much is like having a fun time yeah. just drawing Mario yeah. in different outfits and the other yeah. characters and stuff. Oh, but, that's uh, what was great about it. It's like they expanded uh, the gameplay of the first one and two and well, even though two is not two, but that's yeah. a whole different discussion. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I like the suits that they threw in, like the Tanuki suit and you get the Hammer yeah. Brothers suit and you can use the weapons against them now like the hammer brothers yeah. oh well, mm-hmm. i'm gonna throw a hammer back at you yeah. and, you know it's such a fantastic nes game oh and yeah it's still it was so much the yeah. of time so yeah. the, there was say, so much oh sorry go ahead start <laughs> i will say this though that two-player mode where you're facing each other mm-hmm. yeah oh, was a lot of fights between me and my sister. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I want those what ups? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You could steal the stars and the mushrooms off of the the mat or the uh, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah the extra life deal. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Um. So I got I got a story for this one too, and I'd even add is like one of mine, and I love Super Mario World is unquestionably my favorite of all the Mario stuff, but mm-hmm. I love Mario Three. So Mario. I remember. Whenever that came out, my uncle was staying with us, and like he would have to get up really early so I to go to work or to, I think it was like he mid afternoon he'd go to work, but like I get up really early and like I'd just be playing Mario three and there's one moment where it's like he came there I have to work and you're playing this game so loud my dad's like, <laughs> what's going on over here and it's like there was a that whole thing where uh homer was choking bart i was like there was almost like a scene like that it never really <laughs> happened but it was like we always joked about it <laughs> but man there's so many memories about that game yeah mm-hmm. exactly like even my uncle said well you could have bought three games for the same amount of money that you pay for that but i'm like mm-hmm. yeah but i earned this one yeah mm-hmm. do you I remember won. how yeah do you remember how much it was because i remember i saved up all kinds of money and i i put it on pre-order and and it took forever. Like I'd be calling the good guys in in Circuit City every day. To, Is it there yet? Is there yet there? Oh, no, <laughs> I'll call you. But I can't remember. It was it like thirty five or was it fifty? I can't they remember. Been, I think about fifty nine or sixty nine here. Oh, but okay. Canada, wow. the prices are a little different. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. 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 For my number ten, I went with kind of a mixture of arcades, video game consoles, mm-hmm. and PC. So. Uh, yeah. mine number 10 is definitely <laughs> something that is very nostalgia for me and something of a franchise I love very much and that is the Terminator 2 arcade game oh, yeah, good one. I remember going <laughs> to uh, Super Track with my dad and he'd go put in like $40 worth of quarters and we sat there and played it and beat it and it's like there's a lot mm-hmm. of arcade games that I got to have that experience but it was so cool hearing Arnold's voice uh, you know, all, all the sound bites from it, just going from the future war to the present, like even the stages where it's like you're trying to protect either the truck or the yeah. police van, the SWAT van from the T-1000 or just Terminators and stuff. That was so mm-hmm. difficult. I remember that was like a yeah. part that would completely take all your quarters Yeah, uh, trying to survive <laughs> that. Uh, Doesn't most arcade games. Do that, <laughs> What's wrong? What did you say? doesn't most arcade games do that yeah yeah, yeah. typically they do yes yeah <laughs> oh, uh, but that's part of the money, fun right? <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> sorry but i don't know how many times you'd be playing a game like that and stuff and you'd either be the person carrying the game so they could go run and get more quarters or yeah you were the one to go run an errand and get the quarters and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah yeah i miss those days <laughs> yeah yeah I, I yeah i almost put that game on my list because i feel the same way about it like it was because I was such a big fan of that movie. My dad one time picked me up from school on his motorcycle and took me to go see Terminator 2 at the theater. It's probably like my one of my favorite movies I've ever seen at the theater with my dad. And then like we went to the arcade. Of, I don't know if it was that day or later on. And here's this game with uh, the, the, the vibrating machine guns. And it looks like the movie and you see like a digitized Arnold and a digitized Robert Patrick. And it's like, whoa, this looks like the movie. And, he, and it. Like that was like my favorite <laughs> that game back then at the arcade. 
and I can never beat it. I didn't have enough money. <laughs> yeah, I don't so, think I've played the arcade version, but uh, played, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you played the Some ports? version. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was sad because like uh, we have an arcade here, um, and they had it, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna oh, sit yeah. down and play it because it was like unlimited play. But uh, both of the guns were off. Like one was kind oh, of oh yeah, yeah. They, a lot of them were like up. Yeah. Yeah. And like I got all the way to the point with the um the SWAT the van. van. Yeah. I was trying to do it and it's like, nope. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm not gonna get to beat the game again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even I don't think I could beat it on the console or the arcade. Good game, man. I, I oh, heck one yeah. of the ones I'd love to have is a, a arcade one up or actually yeah. have the uh, the real cabinet. My number nine is uh Friday the 13th on NES. Nice. Oh. Um it, it was one of those games where it was my first horror game, per se, you know, mm -hmm. and, and what we would do is we'd invite a bunch of friends over and you got to pick one of the counselors. So, you know, there's there's six in the game and um, you pick one. If that counselor is dead, then you're out of the game. And uh, we'd, we'd all, you know, pass the controller around. And it was so much fun. It was kind of intimidating, too. You know, is he around the corner? Is, are you going to get to the kids in time? Like. It was it was fun, and then um, we carry that on even to uh, to our college years. We would uh, take over the TV in the uh, the sub waiting room and play Friday Thirteenth on Friday Thirteenth, and yeah. uh, it just it brings back a lot of memories to me. You know mm -hmm. that purple clad Jason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's definitely yeah. one of those games I never finished. Like when I was younger, but I you know played and beat later on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, same. I gotta but, beat that one. Maybe you can walk me through that start. <laughs> oh, I could beat that in like twelve minutes now. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you too. Can, yeah, one of you guys. I don't know. It looks super overwhelming to me. Like I really appreciate like like the game. I can tell there's like some meat to that game. Yeah, I mean, if you do it the yeah. the normal way, then it'll take yeah, yeah. like a half an hour. But if yeah, you, there's tricks to get like the 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 torch real fast. Yeah, yeah, so you can beat it quick. Um, you exploit chasing, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. um, but well, then you can always watch the uh, angry video game nerd. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> yeah. uh, what not to do? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I might like... be able to yeah beat Jekyll and Hyde after watching that one. He did. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, what a game that is! Uh... You know, his thing is like what the camp, camp counselors would have done, just drink beer and not be watching the kids <laughs> and stuff. So that's why he died. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, number nine is Spider-Man 3. Um, I put this one at number nine because it's another one I played a lot, but I didn't play it as much as any other one. I mean, yeah, I played a lot of Spider-Man games. I even played the Dreamcast, which I think is the same one as the PS1 mm. version. Yeah. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but that was one of my favorites, and that was on PlayStation 2. And on PlayStation 3, they put it on the System 2, but it's completely different. Like, the graphics, of course, are different, but the whole game, it's not even based off the same game, which Spider-Man 3 on PlayStation 2 isn't even based off the movie, except for the ending and some parts of the game. But it goes off into like this, um, like the beginning is like the movie. And another mm -hmm. part is about a vampire. I'm like, this is there's nothing to do with Spider Man. <laughs> oh, and well, if then it's, if it's Morbius, there is Morbius, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, yeah. then yeah, yeah. It was it was that it was that guy because you were taking rocks off this like um statue and it would echo and it would make another. This girl in the game, like it would, it would hurt her, and that's how you'd fight her. I can't remember the whole mm -hmm. thing, but that was one of my favorite games. And I remember a, it was a rainy day when I picked up the game, and I could not stop playing it. I I remember playing it until maybe three in the morning. The only <laughs> thing I remember about that game was like the whole like giant Sandman and fighting. Yeah. Him with Green. Uh, well, with the. Uh... Harry Goblin. Oh, oh okay. I don't, I don't think that. I've ever played that one actually. <laughs> Wasn't that um? It was a different. It was another version of Goblin. I can't remember his name. It was he was orange, right? An orange Hobgoblin. colored. Yeah, there's yeah, Hob yeah. and 
screen and yeah hobgoblin is not related to the osborns at all no no <laughs> and there's two different versions of him and one of them is cursed by a demon and can't take the mask off hmm? okay so <laughs> i have this is kind of a typical one i think everyone has nostalgia for this and i haven't really played it much in a while so i put this one uh a Tetris on the Game Boy. Oh, I almost put that on my uh, yeah, yeah, the, Tetris. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Oh man, this thing. This like I was never really into puzzle games. It was always like Mario, Mario, Mario. And this <laughs> Game Boy was this Game Boy was coming out, and I love Nintendo. Of course, my parents got me that. I think it was pretty modestly priced back then, like it was under a hundred bucks, uh, which which, uh, which seems like a lot, but I mean. Um, for like a nice little system like that. Uh, but I remember this thing was at Target and Walmart or whatever it was. And there was like a kiosk display where you could play it. And then my mom would go shopping or whatever. I would just go there and play that thing all day long. Like, man, like I figured out how to play it by myself, like line up the lines. And man, this is so fun. Like I never thought I would be into a puzzle game like this. <laughs> and because uh, I was just about like Mario, Zelda, Mario, um, uh, but man, this thing like is is like a perfect game. Like the guy who came up with this is a genius, <laughs> and this is still my, this is still my favorite version. Like there's new versions like on PC and on the newer consoles, and the, they have done a lot of improvements and more variety. But this is still my favorite right here. Um, when I pulled this out the other day, I played it again, and it's been a while, but I still kind of had it. I got like 100 and 136 lines, and then I got I beat that. Uh, game b where you see the rocket ship fly up mm -hmm. i know that's not that's not the best score but i was kind of happy with myself like i went in rusty and did that but man it took me back so like and, and it was such an entertaining thing like i know it's probably taking uh valuable moments out of my life when we were traveling i could have been looking at the scenery and all that outside but i was sitting here playing <laughs> this game in the back seat of the car <laughs> oh, that, that's there's scenery enough in the game okay. yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah you just see moscow it's great it, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like every time you yeah. played you put on you put on yeah, a park because it's cold yeah <laughs> and, the mu yeah, and the music's like that that russian um music i think there's like three little tracks in there and they're all pretty good <laughs> and seeing that little i thought oh the game boy graphics are so good when you see that rocket ship fly away at the end like oh look at that like oh this looks almost real this is <laughs> the little <laughs> rocket ship <laughs> um didn't the game boy also have a Doctor Mario and Tetris. Yeah, or was it just Dr. yeah, Mario? yeah. I think I think it might have had the two in one, but I did have Doctor Mario too, and that's another banger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there was a double cartridge, or was that just on Super Nintendo, or it was Tetris it was on Super 2. Nintendo. I don't know if it was yes, on. Yeah, te it might have been Tetris two and 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 Doctor Mario, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah I played so much of Tetris as well. Oh heck yeah! Not so much on the Game Boy. I played it a lot on the NES. And yeah, the that's, PC. yeah, that's, yeah. Um, I remember the one day uh, it was raining at school, so like barely anybody showed up for school that day, and I was one of the ones who did. And the teacher's like, "Well, just play on the computer then." So I played Tetris mm -hmm. all afternoon. Yeah. And I hit over a thousand lines. I was just yeah. in the zone, and I'm like, "Holy yeah. crap!" <laughs> but uh, no. I agree with you. It's one of the one of the best Game Boy games for sure, or at least the ones I played on. And yeah. this, this one is a PC game. Um, it's a Sierra game, actually. So mm. it's called Quest for Glory. Uh, mostly one and two that I played a lot of um, when I was young. Uh, my grandpa had it on his computer, and you know I was a console kid at the time and i thought what is that and he's like oh this weird adventure game and you can mm -hmm. type and text and all that i'm, like, I'm mm. gonna try it out loved it wasn't good at it <laughs> but mm -hmm. um i finished them these days because you know or like a few years back whenever i tried it again like um uh, through mm -hmm. uh, GOG. Band where i think it was something like that or gog yeah yeah um it was just a very colorful PC game. Nice little adventure. You can go around. It's practically open world, so to speak, because you can go wherever you might get into trouble. Uh, but uh, you can. And it was just, I don't know. And I like the idea that you can uh, pick the different classes. But the, the, 
the reason why it's nostalgic is because I went to my grandparents' place and got to play and got to spend time with them and yeah. things like that. It just was a nice little uh, different mm -hmm. game that I was used to at the time, like playing uh, Super Mario or uh, Contra or something like that yeah. before I got into uh, RPGs, which I will get to one of my other numbers uh, later. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it was just, just a lot of fun. But that was technically my cheat. I put one and two together because mm -hmm. those are the ones I played the mm -hmm. most when I was young. So I got to ask, did you play the RGV version or the original uh, release? Because the RGV one had it where you didn't have to type in everything. It was a click point adventure for at least the first game. Yeah, no, I uh, played the original. Like, okay. Because my grandpa okay. had the original stuff. And then I have tried the other one that you're talking about, but uh, no, I definitely was more text. And they came with that weird uh, code book, like book, you yes. use the red it was, thing on it. Uh, <laughs> uh so oh yeah, yeah. that was the, the pre book. the pre, the the mm -hmm. handbook but it's also the uh way to the drm you know the whole like mm -hmm. people from copying games and stuff back then mm -hmm. yeah because it was on a floppy disk um yeah. so that floppy. is my number <laughs> that is my number one by the way and i'll really uh, yeah okay. nice it's funny that it came up <laughs> during this so. mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. this is like a it's like a point and click or like a king's quest type thing or like a yes. um, yeah okay Same yeah yeah that, yeah that, yeah those always look into battles too yeah, yeah yeah i know i probably watch stuff on those they look really interesting there was one i had on, or my friend had on pc and i thought it was so cool it's called like hugo's house of horrors i think it was That's something like minor. that yeah but i don't think it was on that same level but it was one of those like text like have the guy uh, check the mailbox or try to use the key on the door like <laughs> kind of kind of like like a shadow gate type thing but mm -hmm. yeah yeah or return to zork or whatever yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 snatchers that way you got yeah i love yeah rise i love that dragon. game yeah rise of dragon is cool too i yeah i just did the shadow gate and deja vu i love those games those are a lot of fun i remember yeah. playing them on the nes uh yeah those two especially yeah more so shadow gate but still yeah it's definitely one i'd love to stream but I, it's been so long since i, since I played it and you mm -hmm. can easily fail that game if you don't know what you're doing oh mm -hmm. my god the amount of mistakes you can do and die and yes die and die. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to save a lot <laughs> mm -hmm. and many different slots so you can figure out what not to do mm -hmm. <laughs> So going back to the arcade stuff for me for uh, number nine is definitely going to be the TMNT arcade game. Oh, I remember go wrong with that. going mm -hmm. from I remember us hearing about it at the comic book shop we used to frequent going there with my dad, my uncle Colin, who is on the podcast and then a friend of ours named Paul and playing that game. And then mm -hmm. uh, there was one point, I think, when we got to uh just midway through the game i can't even remember right now and i had to carry the game while they had to go get quarters because they all died and we ran out of quarters <laughs> and uh, it's like and as soon as they came back i was like on a sliver of health left and i was like okay and we uh we beat it and i just remember that was pure turtle hype you know we were oh heck yeah watching the the cartoon you know the movie hit was already out uh the, the archie comics and the original comic of course and then the toys the toys just being it was all about the mutants. Yeah, it dominated our childhood, right? There. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I have the yeah. entire 1987 series. That's oh, excellent! Yeah. It's in the uh, their turtle van, so you pop. Yeah, pop, okay, I've seen that thing. Yeah, that's it's got all the discs in there. I'm like, oh, yeah. I have to have this huge turtle <laughs> van here. But yeah. that's definitely something me and Stark have in common. So, I yeah. love the turtles. Oh yeah. Um, I can didn't talk about that all day. That, um, <laughs> didn't they put that Ninja Turtle game on Super Nintendo or Nintendo? I can't. Nintendo. Yeah, actually. yeah, they ported Nintendo. it over to, to Nintendo, and it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And they added like two new stages and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. New bosses. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it in, in my list too, actually. Yeah. Not the arcade version, yeah. but the, the, the NES, NES version. version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got. Uh, if you if you want me to just piggyback off of that, my number eight is the same game. <laughs> oh, dear. i guess we could kind of like co-join on that one. yeah 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 we, yeah, yeah we yeah. could do it. <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause that thing, I didn't. Sorry, Vince was saying it was at. He heard about it at the comic shop. Like I had no idea this thing was a thing, and I went to the arcade at the mall, and the, all the kids were gathered around this this cabinet in the center of the arcade. Like there was always like one showpiece or like one, like the newest hottest machine was always in the middle of this arcade called Tilt. We had um, it had a lot of pinball machines and a, and a, a billiards. It was called Tilt. It was the coolest freaking arcade. But that thing was in the middle. And all the kids are gathered out. You can play four turtles at once. And it had the theme song from the cartoon. Like, what? Like, well, this yes. game like has this the audio from the cartoon, and it looks like the cartoon. <laughs> and, and it has all the the, the freaking soundtrack so freaking amazing. Like it intertwines the turtles theme into like all the songs on the game. Or like it it um mm-hmm. it weaves that turtles theme into like all the songs, and it, it was so freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's everywhere you go, you find kids that always want to play that with you and you Someone would always be dumping quarters in, so usually you could get to the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you were on the like the that last makes... two stages. All right, I'm gonna put a quarter in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be something I would do. Yeah. I lose, I'm gonna keep playing it. Yeah. Oh, it's very addictive. Yeah. 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 I'm glad they put that on uh, the uh, compilation. Yeah. Oh, oh, I was yeah. so glad it was on there. And they have yeah, both I versions too. Of that. <laughs> yeah, and they had both versions. I was so glad they put every version yes, of every game yeah. on that because I freaking love the. It's not nostalgic to me because I always play it, but the NES version, I freaking love that game. I think that's like my favorite eight bit beat 'em up. It like plays so smoothly. Oh, the it was so good. I, I love that freaking game. Yeah. Yeah. I got the Switch and the uh, what is it, the PS5 version? Yeah, yeah. heck yeah! <laughs> it's more so because my friends are like, "Oh, I got the Switch version." I'm like, yeah. yeah, fine, I'll get the other one now. <laughs> yeah, <But. laughs> yeah. If I get that, we gotta play it sometime. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm yeah, down. I'm yeah. always down for that. Mm-hmm. Turtles, yeah. anytime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Didn't they make a new one? Oh yeah, that new one's really good. Treasure that Shredder's Revenge. Revenge. Do you have yeah. that, Sean? Yeah. Or have you seen it? I I don't. I wish yeah. I did. I don't have any Switch anymore. Oh okay. I have that too. <laughs> yeah. Fun game. Heck yeah. You got any memories from that, uh, Matt, or anything? Oh yeah, uh, uh Turtles Arcade. <laughs> when the One Up came up with it, came out with it. Yeah, number one buy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right now. Heck yeah. <laughs> I was I was literally like, uh, we were in the middle of moving a warehouse, and I got the notification that was officially up at Walmart, and I was like, "How am I going to get the money to pay for this?" And I was like, "Look in and look. Oh, I can do four way pay with PayPal. Hell yes!" <laughs> <Let's do it>. <laughs> <laughs> I was That's in cloud me, nine that whole day. <laughs> give me one minute. Yeah. That's great. Hmm. Yeah, well, that would have been, I guess, number eight for me too. But it would have been the NES version for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, one memory from it had the Pizza Hut coupon on the back of that box. Yep, for yep. It. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, <laughs> I got this game. I'm going to play it. I'm going to go get that pizza. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I got I, that pizza too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, again, Turtles, like what? What can you oh, not yeah. say you about say? that? Right, yeah. mm-hmm. like great beat 'em up game for sure. Uh, Two player awesome mode on it uh, for the NES version. Definitely the arcade version is four player. Mm-hmm. Um, music's great. The two extra uh, stages were a nice touch. Uh, I didn't play it too 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 much at the arcade mostly because I I own didn't always have the money, but uh, right. right. That's yeah. why I was so happy to have the NES version. I'm like, well, oh, I can heck just pop yeah. it into my NES and let's just go. <laughs> so, but I would play that a lot. And then, yeah, it was just a, I, like I said, what can you not say about that game? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at least you wouldn't be spending like thirty dollars on the game. You just spend the one thirty dollars or whatever. Mm-hmm. How much you yeah, one time. You can play it all you want. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> I don't even want to think of how much money I spent playing arcades at all in general with everything. I yeah. <laughs> There's a few I've done that with. And uh, yeah, those are other mm-hmm. moments in my life. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. My number eight is I just went through the whole Spider-Man, but Spider-Man 2 <laughs> is my number eight. Literally, I, mm-hmm. I, that was, those were one of my favorite games to play. 
Spider-Man 2, I actually played on the original Xbox. Um, I played that one a lot on the Xbox. I actually think I beat it, like 100% of it. It's not just those story missions. There's mm-hmm. actually other missions too. I don't know if you notice, like when you're going, if you're in the game, <clears throat> you can go around the city and there's like green question marks on people's heads. <clears throat> Sorry. There's like, um, I guess a thousand uh, fellows or something like that in the game. Mm-hmm. And I really did every single one. Well, wow, kind of like a World of Warcraft type thing, huh? <laughs> Yeah, like they all have the little um, little question mark on their head. Yeah, that's yeah. that's cool. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it would be like, "Hey, Spidey, yeah. over here!" Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all the pizza yeah. missions and okay, the yeah. worst the, the, the worst the... missions. If I remember correctly, if this is the right game, was the Mysterio stuff. And then when you had to go out to the Statue of Liberty, oh, yeah. I, I was like, oh, yes. I, I wanted mm-hmm. to not play that game again. But after that, it was good. But it was just that Mysterio stuff was just. Oh sh- no. It, if oh, I'm thinking was right, good. wasn't there like a mission in there with Mysterio where if it's the Spider Man 2 we're thinking of? Mm-hmm. Um there's like one you have to punch a bunch of mirrors because I believe so. That, that's yeah. the one I'm talking about. Uh. Uh, the game. <laughs> and you had to punch a bunch of mirrors because apparently if you look in the mirror, I know the Spider Man would come out, but it's fighting you. Yeah, I think that's mm-hmm. the same one. Yeah. It's also the same one where you fight him in a theater room, so to speak. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And then, of course, what you're talking about, Vince, with the Statue of Liberty. And, the, the, oh. the UFOs and stuff. Yeah. And you're like, yes, yes. Every time you fall in the water, it's like you start, have to restart the mission. I'm like, oh, gosh, what is this? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Great game, but the, there was a oh, couple yeah. moments that were annoying. But I like fighting Shocker just for yeah. oh, his yeah. theme mm-hmm. song was so good. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite things to do is I don't know if um, you guys would do it but in the game after you beat up a good, uh, bad guy you could still beat him up even if he's down so I would literally just swing yep. the person around and around and yep. just throw him mm-hmm. everywhere I thought that was funny <laughs> don't worry we we all do weird stuff in games so there, I think there was one <laughs> moment I was I was yeah. playing uh, Final Fantasy uh, Remake, and there's this point where the thugs are around a fire, and like they kind of like you beat them up, and they're like faking like they're dead, and I just kind of like kept moving them to the fire. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I did that with I did that in Fallout also. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, so you can kind of pick them up like in uh, Elder Scrolls and Fallout and drag them a bit on Final Fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my number eight is Star Trek Generations for the PC. Um, huge Star Trek fan, and um, mm-hmm. I've been jonesing for a good Star Trek game. I know that movie is a little controversial when it comes to Star Trek fans, but I I enjoyed it. I like and that. Yeah. The game, yeah, and and the game's like, you you know, you're looking for Sauron. Which planet is he on? You know which. Like in the movie, there's one way the ribbon goes. In the game, they give you three options. So you go to the planet, search for him. And there's like a doom like mission on the planet, right? So like in the first mission, uh-huh. you're you're on the observatory from the movie as Riker, and you have to find out you know where he is and find um, you know items to open doors and stuff like that. Um, but they they expand upon it. So you know the movie only shows you a few planets. This one takes you, the, the Romulus takes you to a, a living planet where you're trying to heal it and stuff like that. Um, and there's actual an ending where you fail, fail, you know? And uh, there's mm. there's ship battles. Uh, you're on the Enterprise. It, it feels like you're on the set. And that's, wow. that's what I look for in a Star Trek game, you know? Yeah. Uh, the thing that hurts is it only came to PC. It never came to like PlayStation or anything like that. So oh, okay. it's one of those things where yeah. it either got it or you didn't, you know. And um I picked it up on a whim because I like Star Trek and it just it was a great game and it, it brings back memories because I didn't play a lot of PC games back then, you know. Uh maybe Warcraft and Warcraft Two. Mm. But then this one mm. was like, you know, they got the cast back, they were doing uh 
videos that wasn't yeah, in the, the movie. FMV is oh wow. yeah 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 so if if you can find it I, I highly recommend it um, so it's like a doom type game mm-hmm oh wow uh it's still space exploration but like when you do your missions yeah it, that's it becomes, tight. yeah can you save captain kirk or does he still die <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, only so nice. is save, the only option is to save Kirk. <laughs> um, start. Um, have you played? I think it's a Star Trek game. It's like a top down, and you're it's like you're trying to control your army to go here, or I can't remember. It's it's like a certain game that like an just came out. It's something like I. It's like you're. I can't. I can't think of it. It's. It's a Star Trek game, but it's online. That's all I know. Is it it's like still going to this or day. something like that? I think it's uh, what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Um, I know my friend plays it a lot, and I watch him play it sometimes. I just, I don't uh, know. I just know I see Star Trek. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. <laughs> Sorry to drag this out, but have you played uh, this, the in, the 25th anniversary on NES Start? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you like? Do you like it? Mm-hmm. I, I think yeah. it's. Uh, I it's I can't. I can't. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I I get stuck on it, but I love like the how it has the music from the show and it has like the intro yeah. from the show and all that. And it has pretty good graphics. <laughs> <laughs> but I get stuck on it. <laughs> and the funny thing is about Star Trek games, you got to be careful with them because yeah. my wife a couple of years ago bought me the Sega Genesis game and the Super uh-huh. Nintendo game, not knowing it's the same game with a different title. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it is, it's crazy. And she's like, I'm so sorry. I said, we didn't know, but now we have both friends. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Fair enough. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It's not like playing I'm uh, weird. Shadow Run on the Super Nintendo or the Genesis. Those are completely <laughs> yeah, different they're games. way different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm a weird one. I would collect both the Super Nintendo and Genesis versions. Yeah, I, I would do that sometimes. <laughs> do you guys ever watch Console Wars? Yeah, I love that show. Yeah, I, I read the book. I think that it started it. I guess I think they did. Like, um, it talked about the whole thing. Of, uh, but I never watched the show. So oh, I think that that's something totally different. Might, okay. That's like the book. Yeah. There's like a book and a movie and a documentary about it. But there's the show with the two guys. That one guy represents Sega and one guy represents Nintendo, and they argue about which version's better. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're okay. talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great show. My wife and I watched that. That's like one of the only shows we always watch. <laughs> yeah. I was going nice. to make a joke like Game Sack. I mean, because both Dave. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. Cause, yeah, because the one guy. Yeah, it's kind of like that. But but it's just like the whole thing is based on like a little script. It's around where they're, they're arguing about which game is better. And so it goes into deep. <laughs> yeah, they go into sound, uh, graphics, controls. Like they, they deep dive into these games. Mm-hmm. See which one's better. So I guess since you guys did y'all's eights already, <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and do mine. So um, this is something that consumed my life for a while. I remember we had a test that you a standardized test that we had to do here in Texas, and I had finished it my, uh, my sophomore year. So like my junior and senior year, like we usually had that period off, like we wouldn't have to go to school. So. It was always us getting up, going to the arcade, and playing Tech and Tag. Oh, and right on. That's that's my. I mean, it was all over just Tekken. And so, you play te- uh, between playing like Beck and June and Brian Fury and Law. Mm-hmm. I was just sitting in class doing like this with your hands because you had the thing and you're trying to memorize the muscle memory for the uh, you know the combos and stuff and. Mm-hmm. It was just such a big thing. And especially when Tekken Tag came out on the PS2 as a launch title, I had a house party. We just, I hooked it up. And we just like, I had like 20 of my friends over and we we're just sitting there playing Tekken. Wow, excellent. Tag and <laughs> <That's awesome, actually. laughs> uh, Is that what started your love for Tekken? Because I know you're like, you're pretty like a, a competitive at that right there now mm-hmm. with the newer ones. So I, I, Started playing Tekken back in the day with the first one, but oh, it, yeah, was yeah, yeah. Ta- it was Tekken Tag and it yeah. really fueled my fire for yeah. that fighting game as my main for everything. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I love Street Fighter, 
I love yeah. virtual fighter. I love all that stuff, but it's mm-hmm. like Tekken is like will be the thing I always pick up. Yeah. I will always spend time with, mm-hmm. and eventually I'll start teaching my son how to play it. All right, but it's definitely an arcade. I'd love to have. <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be tight. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> do you think they'll ever do like one ups of those? I don't know. I they have yeah. if they haven't done it yet. I don't know if they will. Yeah. Um, they haven't even really done like any of the alpha games or um, you know, the three uh Street Fighter three games. Any of that yeah. stuff. It's always just been like the the older ones. Street Fighter two, and it's like Street Fighter two yeah. is great and everything, but man, the innovations that have come from fighting games past that with the combos and yeah, yeah. The, the supers, the things that make them mm-hmm. stand out that help kind of define the fighting game mm-hmm. genre as a whole is so much better than, than yeah. what Street Fighter 2. I, it's nostalgic, yes, I get it, but yeah. I'm like, I'd, I'd take any of the alpha games, any of thing, anything past Street Fighter 2, I'd take. Uh-huh. Hmm. Have they made a Tekken 9? I know they did the Tekken 8 like on PS3 and stuff, but I never... I don't know if they made a Tekken 9. Are they well, up Tekken to 8, 8 now? Tekken 8 just came out, and that's on uh, yeah. oh. PC, uh, PlayStation 5, and Xbox. But as far as... Oh. And it is cross-play, which is great. Mm. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, But as far as like Mortal Kombat, they're on, like, what, 12? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of something else, I think. I know that there's, like, um a game... I think it's... I don't know. I don't know, but... Oh, I must be thinking about Tekken 5. Oh, no, Dead or Alive 5. That's what I'm thinking oh, of. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dead or Alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think they're That's up to 6 or so of. with that. Because yep. yeah. I, I was thinking about a PlayStation 3 game, and it was Dead or Alive 5. Yeah. Hmm. That was pretty cool how they crossed over with the uh, Virtua Fighters on that. Was it 5 or 6? 5, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and that's a series that I'd love to see picked up and move forward, but it seems mm-hmm. like they've just kind of got stagnant with like they had like four different versions of five. Yeah. <laughs> and then they had the DLC for the Tekken characters, and it's like, okay, yeah. this is cool, but I want I want to yeah. see an evolution. They kind yeah. of did that with Street Fighter 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Versions. <laughs> yep. Yeah, there's they were still making Street Fighter 2s up until the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's how we got uh, Violent Ken and uh, you yeah, know. yeah. Oh, I love that game. <laughs> I think uh, the presence I went with that was Turbo or something like yeah. that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So my number seven is it's a kids game, but a lot of people will play it as, as adults. Um, SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, and I played this. I don't even know how many hours I put into this game. I've beaten it, I think, twice. It's one of my favorite games to play. I played it a lot um, with my sister. She's blind, but I still, you know, play with her, you know. Mm -hmm. I played it with my dad's girlfriend, and it was a lot of fun. I think they remastered it for the Switch and stuff like that. They did. Mm -hmm. I think I remember Yeah, like pretty recently, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It was called, like, Spongebob about a the button rehydrated mm-hmm. that game that was actually um delayed i don't know if you guys knew that it was delayed for like a year and then it finally came out like i said i grew up playing this game I believe my first like console that wasn't portable was a gamecube and that was one of the games that came on it or came with it and i played that a ton and i mean a ton well, GameCube mm. is a good system to start with. Oh, heck yes. Mm. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, mean, I can't imagine, like, when we were kids, we had Nintendo, and that was so awesome, and and Genesis and all that, but imagine, like, the kids, like, your age or a little bit older that first had that GameCube, like, how awesome that would be if you're, like, five years old and you see those games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you see something awesome, and then it's, like, yeah, cool, like version of Mario. What is this nonsense? What yeah, is yeah, yeah. On? He looks <laughs> awful. It might be like how how <laughs> I think of Atari <laughs> games. <laughs> yeah, oh, boy. just blocks. <laughs> yeah, because I know I know some guys maybe our age or a little older are really into those, but man, mm-hmm. like they're just so basic. I can't. They don't really hit me in the feels, but I appreciate them. Yeah, I like those those old blocky ones. I just it doesn't do it for me like Nintendo does. It might just be my age or. Like, if I was a little older, I might appreciate it more. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, my number seven was um, Star Wars for Game Boy. Um, I've actually told this story before on my channel where it was a birthday. Well, my birthday is in the middle of summer, June, and um, uh, we couldn't have a birthday party because, um, you know, it was a work week. And so my grandmother took me out to uh, Taco Bell and to Walmart, and she said I could pick out a game. And I looked and looked and looked, and I was like, what game do I want if I get a free shot at a game? And for some reason, Star Wars just stuck out to me, you know? And I remember playing that game. Again, Game Boy, you take it everywhere, you know? And religiously, I played that game. It's, it's you know, it's the one where you collect on Leia, R2, and Obi-Wan. You know, you go through all that. It's, it's basically a port of the, the NES Star Wars game. Mm -hmm. But... Right um, it was one that I, I held on to for a very, very long time. And it just like you said, when you think of nostalgia, you think of something with memories attached to it. Mm -hmm. And that game was almost my number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so that's like really good. I, I, I prefer the, the super star Wars games, just those, that those first three, but like mm -hmm. the, it, it was such a unique like way to tell stories in a game and a game for the Nintendo versions and the, the game boy mm -hmm. it was different because like, i don't even think like yeah. star wars or empire strikes one of them doesn't end like it's supposed to or something like that and then mm -hmm. they uh didn't even do return of the jedi as a as a game on the mm -hmm. on the nes yeah i remember that <laughs> yeah. was there a, were, were all three of them on game boy or just the first two or is it just star wars that was the only one i was able to obtain uh, so yeah. i don't know yeah. yeah i'm not 100 percent sure on the game boy side but yeah. i know the nes had well, I think two different versions of Star Wars, because I think mm -hmm. there was a Japanese version as well. Yeah. And uh, then there's the Empire Strikes Back, but like Vince was saying, uh, they didn't go Return of the Jedi. Only yeah. when they did the Super Nintendo uh, yeah. versions of the games, mm -hmm. that's when they did the trilogy. Yeah. But I never played the Game Boy one, but I'm kind of curious to try it out, actually. Yeah, me too. And they just did that whole limited run release of it too, like a couple of years oh, ago. Nice, I think. nice. Yeah, they were going through all the old, old games except for they didn't. I don't mm. think they did any of the Super Star Wars games, but it was like all the Genesis, <laughs> uh, like the oh, NES, really? the Game Boy, the '64 stuff. So you got like Pod. Oh, you got shadows. Games. You get shadows of the yeah, Empire. Of, yeah. Such oh, I love game. that. Oh, I love that. Dash Rendar. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big Star Wars fan. So yeah, you guys. But um, it's it's one of those things. Is like a lot of times when we buy new consoles, it had to. It was because there was a Star Wars game on. Yeah, yep. you know, like the 32x getting the the Star Wars arcade. You know, yeah. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but I was hyped about that Star Wars fighting game, and I bought it and I played the hell out of it because <laughs> I, love, I, I hey, love fighting. I... I love Star Wars and I love fighting games, and it had yes. like the John Williams uh, score like on the 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 soundtrack oh, there. trifecta <laughs> there we go yeah yeah <laughs> and mara jade was in it come on i mean you got yeah yeah mara jade yeah. yeah and there was like a really deep cut like from the the novels there was it jodo cast yeah the person who stole bubble yeah, fed yeah, armor and yeah, stuff yeah 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 it was funny because like whenever uh Kenner Hasbro were doing the whole yeah, Powers yeah. of the Force 2. There was like two yeah. bubble cats, but one of them was kind of like off color. So I was like, I had that yeah. one to go to test. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Number seven. Okay. This one, um, this is, was kind of on, on the, I was kind of on the fence about this because I still play it a lot. But man, I just like so many times in my life, this game was this nostalgic for me. Uh, Final Fight. I was going to say the arcade version because one time my dad, I remember he went to cash his checks at the 7-Eleven and he would go there and he would like BS with the clerk for a while. So I'd be in there and they had in the back of the corner, there was this arcade cabinet, this gritty, uh, dirty uh, little 7-Eleven um, uh, or whatever it was, had this dirty, gritty looking video game like with graffiti and all of this. It was called Final Fight. It, I had played Double Dragon before, and then I saw this thing, and like the characters were so big, and it kind of looked like it kind of reminded me of like Fist of the North Star because they had like big buff mm. bodies and like little heads, like the animation style. And I didn't know it was tied to Street Fighter or anything, but I go, man, this game looks so good. And I would play, so every time he go cash his checks, I'd play that thing. I go, man, this game's so good. 
Yeah, just like I like the, the the look of it and the the feel of it and the taste of it and the smell of it and everything. But <laughs> uh, but um, and then it um, later on I ended up getting a. a I think we couldn't. Uh, I couldn't afford a PlayStation One at the time, but the JVC XIs were on sale for like forty bucks, mm-hmm. and my mom got me one for Christmas. And I and at Blockbuster Video, I bought a copy of uh, of Sega CDs, uh, um, Final Fight CD, Fight yeah. and, and this thing was like I freaking love that thing. Uh, this this game, I got I got a repro of it too, and now just so I could have a case, but. Uh, but this game here, man, it was just like the arcade. But, the, but that music—I don't know if you, you guys probably know the freaking soundtrack. And this is so freaking good. Um, it's like orchestrated and like rock and roll. It almost sounds like like uh, Pink Floyd or something. Like right? it's like hella good. Uh, the, um, the tracks in this game, and I would just like listen to this thing. And when I finally got a car, I would listen to it in my CD player. And I would even like when I used to make little movies with my friends, I would I'd hook up two VCRs and we, we'd record it or whatever. And we'd, we'd make little movies and I would edit it with like a tape, a, a VHS player and a VCR. And then I would get like a splitter, like an audio splitter so I could add music to it. So I'd hook this thing up. To, I'd hook it up to my JVC XI. So I'd use the music from this game for our little movies to we'd make. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So, that was, so like yeah. this, this movie, this music's like always stuck in my head. Like every time I I hear it, it just takes me back to like when I was in high school, or or um I guess it would have been high school. Yeah, yeah. I just love this game. And it, yeah, and I I wasn't able to beat this game until recently, like w- within the last couple of years. And I freaking love this game. It might be one of my favorite games ever. And it's tied to Street Fighter, and Street Fighter is yeah. my favorite series. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, did you know that like that was almost Street Fighter Two? Yeah. I it love Street that Fighter Eighty Nine. Yeah. 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 Street Fighter Two. <laughs> yeah. yeah they, well, they weren't going to do the whole. Uh, they were going to go with a beat 'em up instead of a fighting yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be that game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's crazy. But yeah. did y'all ever watch the? Was it High Score Girl on Netflix? So uh-uh. you need to watch it. It's an anime. Okay. It, it, I think it's two seasons. And it's about this kid going through the 80s and the 90s up to his going to college. Oh, okay, okay. His journey playing games that we played at the time. Yeah, and yeah. one of the things that he connects with this one girl who's really good at video games is the final fight. And it's Yeah, just oh, great. excellent. Oh, uh, good, good. I got to check this out. Yeah. Okay, sure. yeah. If you're a gamer, you got to watch it. It's it's, it's Okay, fantastic. okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, another thing. This game really nailed that modern beat 'em up. I don't know if it's modern, but like every game since then has this style. Like Streets of Rage has it. Like Captain Commando, all the Capcom ones. Um, I know Night Slashers has it. Like that that mechanic. Uh, like Batman has it, where you walk into him to grab him, and you can get in a couple hits and then toss them and like like crowd control with them. It's like such a satisfying game mechanic, and it all started in this. It was like way different than Double Dragon or a, or a Golden Axe. Just that that play style, and I think they nailed it in the first the first time. Like you're saying, Street Fighter Two, they didn't really nail it in the first one, and even the second one, and the combos were an accident. But mm-hmm. I think like this game style, like they nailed it in the in the first game. <laughs> well, it's cool too because like um, that was the, I mean, I prefer that game over Streets of Rage. Yeah, yeah, me too. I, yeah. I, I just I love the style. Um, I mean, yeah, Streets of Rage one, two, and three have really oh, great yeah, music, yeah. And, and they're they're so iconic. But it's yeah, I felt that uh, there was so much more because it was just like they were building upon what was already existing in the Street Fighter universe. Yeah, so, um, and I love the fact that it's like played on through everything else now. I mean, you got yeah, yeah. Cody as the mayor of uh, the yeah, new city, yeah. <laughs> the city and that yeah oh man I geeked out so much when I played that new Street Fighter Six like it's almost like a Final Fight RPG because you're in Metro City and you meet up with mm-hmm. Damned or he's called Thrasher Damned so they took the yep. Super mm-hmm. Nintendo name of him and the the original arcade his name's Th- Thrasher Damned instead of Damned or Thrasher and, and he's like a major part of the story it's pretty funny. And, uh, yeah, a lot of little Final Fight characters pop up in there. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to go uh, really old on this one. So on the Commodore 64, actually. <laughs> All right. So shows my age now. <laughs> <laughs>
It's called uh, Forbidden Forest. Kind of a old horror side scroll hmm. kind of game. You play as an archer and uh, fighting ghosts and birds and spiders and things like that. Mm-hmm. But the biggest reason why I was thinking about that game is that it was the first computer game I played with my uncle. And he, he introduced me to the whole Commodore 64 and the Vic 20 and you use floppy disks for one or cassettes for the other. And uh, the game was a lot of fun. It was creepy. It was actually pretty colorful for its time. It came out in 1983 mm-hmm. and um, it introduced me to video games and computers and why I love actually building computers and uh, playing games in the, in the first place. And my love for survival horror games, which is my second favorite genre, these next two RPGs. Um, but I think that's the reason why I'm, I thought about that game recently, especially mm-hmm. whenever you mentioned about this uh, podcast. I thought, well, oh, geez, I haven't thought about that game in a while, but it brings a heartwarming memories because my uncle was like only seven years older than me. So we kind of grew up together ish mm-hmm. at the same time. And um, if you can find a way to play it, it you would have quite an interesting experience for an old game. But yeah, I guess that would be my really old, <laughs> one of the oldest games wow. I probably have on my list. Was there, was this game remade? Cause I'm not seeing anything. It looks like there's like a, a, a modern looking game name that. Really? Yeah. Forbidden for, oh no, I just, never mind. It's showing Harry Potter. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there's two yeah. different versions that I know of, uh, which was yeah. the Commodore 64 and then the Atari. I don't remember which Atari though. Oh, okay. This, this kind of seems familiar. Yeah. It's like, it's an interesting side scrolling for yeah, actually yeah. for 1983. Uh, it looked a lot better than a lot of games on the Atari. Yeah. Even though I, I grew up playing the Atari at my family, and mm-hmm. all that it's not my first system that I owned, but it was the first system I really played. Mm-hmm. Uh, besides the Commodore. Yeah, that looks interesting. Yeah, it's I actually. There, yeah, I wonder if there, I wonder if there's a way to play it. Like, is it on any of those new mini consoles? I'm not sure if it's on the because I know the uh, Commodore 64 had released a mini, That's, but I don't know if it's on yeah. there. I mean, uh, you could probably play it on any of the mini consoles as long as you have like Hack Cheese because it, it yeah. loads yeah. RetroArch mm-hmm. on it. So you could probably just yeah. put it on there. Well, um, like I said, this one's really outside the box. Most people wouldn't probably even think of this. Uh, yeah, that's, actually that's, knows that's about pretty it. neat. Yeah. Like, yeah, I have to check that out. I've, I've never yeah, heard of it. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I was thinking, like, this is one of the interesting parts of this podcast is you guys introducing me to things that probably never heard before and that's one mm-hmm. of them i appreciate that yeah mm-hmm. oh glad to be a service <laughs> yeah yeah part of the whole thing of like why i do what i do anyway because it's like mm-hmm. i talk about nostalgia all the time it, it's because it's so ingrained in my my just what i did growing up and it the whole point mm-hmm. of me doing the podcast is this is something for my son later on when he's yeah. mm-hmm. So uh, maybe he can explore my library of games and or maybe try to find some of that stuff out and um, mm-hmm. like I love having everybody on to just talk about that and talk about their experiences and stuff. So I'm oh, gonna do yeah. that more more going forward. Um, well, it's a it's a nice uh, time capsule of s- yeah sorts, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. only in video form. So yeah. And eventually I'm going to put this as a podcast out there. It's like for people to listen to audio. I just don't have the time to like go through the process of take that audio, edit it, or actually take my video. I edited already. Then take the audio. audio from, out of yeah. It. Yeah. 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 So, um, but no, I thank you guys uh, for coming on. And oh, thank you. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having yeah. me. Yeah. Or having all of us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so my number seven, Mortal Kombat three. Mm-hmm. and the reason being is because i that's my favorite mortal Kombat, and i my dad ran a comic book store around the time it came out and uh it was really cool because we got to be there whenever he kind of because he was working for somebody who was t- paying for everything so he's just the manager but he got to design the layout the way the building was going to be the space we rented out and we were there all the time, like after school. And uh, they ended up getting the X-Men Children of the Atom arcade, 
mm-hmm. played the heck out of that. And then when they got Mortal Kombat, I got to play Mortal Kombat 3 through the different versions. So like when it first came out, uh, Smoke wasn't even a character in the roster. And he was my favorite character to play. Um, but I remember like I would go in bag boards, you know, for comics. So they would have mm-hmm. already ready bag boards for people that would come in. And I'd get like a penny per, you know, per thing. So like uh-huh. I would do a hundred and like I'd get a dollar. So then I'd go take that dollar and go play play the Mortal Kombat game and then go back to doing whatever work my dad needed to do. So we would I would do like seven hundred, yeah, seven hundred bag and boards and stuff. That's seven bucks. I can go mm-hmm. maybe go next door to Subway, which was great because you would just get this smell of the baked bread and everything and just coming through yeah. the wall because it was they were literally <laughs> right next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah I always I remember like because like it was funny whenever my dad actually had a store years before um we we were there up there all the time and then I had my Super Nintendo hooked up and I was playing Ghost and Goblins or playing uh you know Street Fighter or Chrono Trigger, well, not even Chrono Trigger, because Chrono Trigger hadn't come out yet, but maybe like Donkey Kong Country and uh, Final Fantasy VI. But I remember some guys coming in, because we'd always go to the arcades all the time on the weekends. And uh, they're like, "You guys, have, have you guys seen the new fighting game? It's called Mortal Kombat. And we're like, what? What is this? And it just sounded so fantastical. Like yeah. the fact that there was this violence and blood everywhere mm-hmm. and People have their heads ripped off, and <laughs> and I was like trying to think of like how this game can compete against Street Fighter, Street Fighter Two, because at the time that's what was out, and then you had this one game that came out that just blew the genre wide open, and it was literally, those, <laughs> people, yeah, yeah, literally, and it, it, it literally yeah. like you had people just know fighting games became super popular, and people mm-hmm. wanted to go play Mortal Kombat. And so it was like just playing that. And but it was just these two moments of time of playing Mortal Kombat for the first time for the first game and then playing Mortal Kombat 3 when it came out. Yeah. So it's yeah. just so nostalgic. That's why I got the uh, Midway uh, what, the legacy cabinet from yeah. one up. So I could just have Mortal Kombat 3, even though I like one too, but yeah, yeah. really for three. Yeah, I sort of put one, one of those Mortal Kombat's on the list because those always like tinkle my nostalgia fancy and right. right nostalgia bone or what it always tickles uh, like i i think about that how they're like digitized and they're like real martial artists like posing right i just something i like about that and it had like a cool like like a inner the dragon meets kind of like fantasy or sci-fi vibe to it mm-hmm. i always thought it was uh inner the dragon meets big trouble, big trouble. yeah that's yes. it that's perfect yes <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit of blood sport too. Yeah, I heard yeah. that the Big Trouble in Little China actually inspired. Uh, yeah, the character Raiden. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Okay. And then David Lopan is very similar to. Yeah, right? it's a yeah. Sing Sung, yeah, yeah. Great movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, another one. It was like great movie, but the remake that we got was like what? There is a Mortal Kombat movie or Mortal Kombat tournament in your Mortal Kombat movie. I felt like Ian Malcolm, you know, because there was no tournament in it at all. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was kind of referring to Big Trouble, but yeah, Mortal Kombat, the first yeah. one at least, was a lot of fun. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah. 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 Number six is Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Okay. Um, that was that was my first ever Grand Theft Auto game. I yeah. played that on the PlayStation 2. Um, you're playing as Tommy Vestetti. I don't know how to pronounce his name that well, but I believe you're caught up in like this drug deal and you have to beat these guys. It's not, I can't, I don't know the whole story, but I know at the end of the game, you have to kill one of the main characters to win. And one of the characters that are, has been helping you at the end of the game comes out as he's your enemy. Oh, yeah. And I, yeah. It, it was a really fun game. Um, I ne- To be honest, I never really beat it. I just played it just to go around killing people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that's mostly what I did with those. <laughs> I would drive around listening to the 80s music. but that Yeah, yeah. Oh, that probably would <laughs> yeah, be. That's what I did too. too. I'm actually breaking the video game rule. Uh, my number <laughs> six is, is Yu-Gi-Oh! The card game. Thanks. 
Yeah, I do. There uh, you go. Yeah. Um, it holds a special place in my heart because uh, a lot of my high school friendships were, were based off that. Um, we went, I was in a uh, marching band and we went to a, uh, to do a parade in Atlanta, Georgia. And we went to a um, Spencer's and behind the shelf was, was Yuki starter deck, Kaiba starter deck. And me and my best friend at the time bought, you know, one of each. And it started like the growth of our friendship to the point where we became not just rivals, but we played in tournaments and we were pretty stinking good at this, you know? And, and I mean, you really could only put, you could put any collectible card game in this spot, but there is something about opening that pack for the first time or, you know, or um, going to a store, you know, picking up a box or something and seeing if you get that rare card, right? That, that one that will push your deck a little bit further, uh, make you a little bit stronger. I know most people now who uh, collect Pokemon are, are worried about the price of a card. Well, we weren't worried about the price of a card. It's, will this, you know, fit into your deck? Will this help you um, in your tournament, you know? And uh, we, we became dreaded in our, our local tournaments. Like, you know, we, we ran the... Um, I remember mine was like a sea of darkness deck where it would be gravity bind and you, you could sneak under gravity bind and hurt people and they couldn't hurt you back. You know, it was kind of sneaky, mm -hmm. but uh, it was, that's just the fun of the game though, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so it'll always hold a special place. Uh, I'm retired now, so I really can put it on my nostalgia list instead of yeah. current, you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. So you never uh, compete anymore? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Ever think yeah. of coming out every time at one one or two? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> you play it online, there you go. <laughs> yeah. No, I played a lot of Magic and uh Pokemon and even the Dragon Ball Z game that was that was around for a while. That was always fun. But I'm glad you added that. That's 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 really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's unique, yeah. It's it's yeah. it's still a nostalgia game because that's why I didn't say like nostalgic video game it just said nostalgic game. okay yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so uh this one it kind of came around later in my life but i still have great nostalgia for it like i, like I was probably a, a senior in high school when this came out most of my stuff i've noticed is from either when i'm in middle school or high school or elementary school this one uh, i was towards the end of high school um resident evil the original one on PlayStation. Oh, look at that case. Oh yeah, the uh, there's not much left of it, but I'm glad to have any uh, uh, case of this. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Tiburon gave this to me. Um, but uh, oh, this thing. I so before I even had a PS2, I didn't. Ha um, I think I wasn't really playing games at that point. And I was with my friend. We were driving to this gym out, outside of town. We would go to it was like a martial arts gym. We went there um, like two times a week, and we, it was kind of a drive. It took like a half hour to drive there. And he was talking about uh, him and his other my other friend, like, oh, we rented this game. Uh, we rented a PlayStation, and we rented this game called Resident Evil. And like I had never seen or heard of this or anything. And the way he's describing it to me, like, yeah, there's this. The, these cops uh, fly down in a helicopter to investigate some murders and the, and it's like real video and it's like real people and I'm like, what video games can be like that like there can be like actors like he's explaining it to me like like how is this uh, I don't know I'm trying to figure out in my mind how this game is like uh, the application of it would be because he explained it to me and it sounds like a movie like yeah you go get uh, then you get attacked by dogs and the dogs chase you into the house and then and then the acting's really bad, and but it's hilarious. And, and he's talking about, oh, I have this, and uh, where this is Chris. What well, I hope this is not Chris's blood. And he's describing <laughs> to me like, like like all the dialogue, like well, like there there's like dialogue and and there's actors in this game, and and, and he's explaining this game to me. So like right then, like I I think uh, what little money I had, I rented a PlayStation the next the weekend. And I rented that game and it was like, it was like a religious experience. Like, cause I love like zombie movies and horror movies and I love games like Metroid and stuff. And I think that's kind of like the evolution of a Metroid game 
but it's kind of, and it has like a realistic setting and, and camera angles like a horror movie like it, there's nothing like that i had ever seen before i know alone in the dark had done that before but i didn't know about that game but that resident evil i put that in i just got addicted to that like i just kept would play it over and over and get and unlock the rocket launcher and all that and just keep playing that game it was like because w- i've always been into movies and the uh, and the uh, horror movies and that thing was like you're playing a horror movie <laughs> that, that game even like before i'd play it like the game has so much nostalgia for me just from like like hearing about it <laughs> and I, I try not to play it that much i maybe play it once every couple of years because I get that nostalgic feeling every time I, I play it. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. I, I have mm-hmm. so many memories. And that that's actually yeah. my number my oh, good, good. number not my number two. Just oh, because good. Of the nostalgic of it. The yeah. um yeah. Like my dad was the one who rented it and had brought yeah, yeah. home for us to play. And we yeah. didn't have a memory card. We got all the way to the point oh, where my God. back into the mansion. Oh yeah, the after the guest in. house. Yeah, and my oh, dad died no. like right there. Oh and no! And we yeah. didn't have a memory card. We're like, dang it! And then I remember my most memorable part is like going into that hallway, that L-shaped hallway, and the Cerberus busting through the friggin' glass, and I yeah. jumped like six feet in the air because it scared <laughs> the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, want, I want you to look at something. So look at your manual, and yeah. you have the advertisement for the. Uh, strategy guide, right? strategy guide yeah read what it said look at some there's there's misspellings on it okay com- complete oh, walk through there's all like the secret secrets secrets is misspelled a uh, uh, strategy uh, strategies is misspelled it's like so there's a couple like typos on the back of it it's hilarious <laughs> oh really <laughs> wait, wait, okay. yeah my complete friend andrew walk who was the one who found that that's oh. funny now I know that some of them got. I think it got fixed, but it's that like first run of the game. Oh yeah, all, all secrets. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have noticed that. <laughs> all secrets. Yeah. Oh geez, that's <laughs> actually really funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's tight. Fun fact: I couldn't play that game for the longest because there was a giant yeah. snake in it. Oh There's yeah, that's, that was oh. scary. Yawn. You, got, like, you got you got to yawn, and you're like, yeah, "Why did it have yeah. mistakes?" Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah, as as corny and, and and silly as it is, like the game is freaking scary. Like, like I, I, I when I first played it, like I go even like if there's just like two zombies in a room, I'd walk in there. I hear you oh, like, "Oh, I don't want to go in there." I leave. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. You're almost a Jill sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was too close. Stand away from the door, Jill. Jill. I'm gonna kick that door Take down. This, since you're a master of unlocking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Like, like all, all of yeah. Barry's lines, I freaking love. Yes, yeah, dude. So cheeky. Did you, did you all watch the? Was it Residents of uh Residents? Yeah. Of Evil, where they they got all the original guys to come yeah. back. To the, mm, yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. yeah, that was so great. Yeah. I can see the guys, the the guy that runs that's like really passionate about. Like he really, that game oh, really dude, hits him great. in the feels. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, well, I might as well throw an arcade one in there. It's not a huge uh, story on it. It's just more so like I used to live right by this corner store that's no longer there, but uh, they had a couple arcade games in there. Uh, one was Double Dragon, and the other one was Ghosts and Goblins. Mm-hmm. The one I kept wanted to beat was Ghosts and Goblins because I could get pretty far in Double Dragon. Ghosts and Goblins ate up a lot of my quarters when I was a kid. I was really mad when I was a kid because I wanted to finish it, but mm-hmm. I loved going there just for that. It was a lot of fun. I would get some candy and then I'll play some of the game and then I would be broke <laughs> real quick mm-hmm. because I only had a few dollars when I was a kid. But... Um, then I found out that you can play it on the NES, which is <laughs> so broken, but um, still a lot of fun. But I guess that would be number six. My my list is not in exact yeah. order, but mm-hmm. there's a couple at the end that will be uh, my number one, number two, and number three. We'll get there, though. But that's yeah. short and sweet in that one. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I remember playing Ghost of Goblins a lot. 
I think I beat it once, but I never went through to play it again to get the second. I was like, no, I did not screw the princess. Right? Oh man, man. I did not know about that until like a few years later when I was in my teens, and I'm like, really? uh-huh. you have to play the game over again? Are you serious? No wonder it's a corn, corn, uh, coin <laughs> hog. So. Yeah. Oh heck yeah! Feed me money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess my number six is going to be Alien versus Predator Arcade. Oh, Capcom's one. fantastic beat 'em up that like starts out with you fighting aliens in a city, then you finding out that the the Marines or the 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 corporation was the ones who started all this stuff, and you're having to fight them, and it was just it was. Mm-hmm. Great uh, and sprite yeah. work was fantastic. I remember mm-hmm. playing in the arcade, beating with my dad, of course, when it came out. But then in high school, like I would completely like skip my lunch. Like I'd be in the cafeteria and I'd probably just eat off somebody, so I'd save my money. Then I would mm-hmm. go home, stop by the Seven Eleven or uh, wasn't Seven Eleven at the time. It was like stop and go, and they had the arcade there, so I'd wow. get. Me- Give me a Coke and some like <laughs> snacks and the rest mm-hmm. of my change would go right into that arcade machine, just sitting there and be <laughs> playing it. <laughs> and I would do that every day for uh, I mean, a good like six months yeah. until like, they took the machine out. And I was like, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <wow. laughs> I never like got that. to. Yeah. That one I never got to play until later on uh, at the arcade because it's never been ported to anything. Right. Other than that Capcom uh, yeah, yeah. arcade stick that's only released yeah, yeah. in Europe. Yeah, I played it later on in like a retro arcade, like it was way after the fact. It was like one of those retro arcades that I didn't realize like Arnold's character's in there, huh? Yep, Schaefer. Like, yeah. you, you, can, you, you can play as, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dutch, yeah, Dutch Schaefer. Dutch, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Didn't they put that version of him in the new Predator game? Oh, cool. I think so. I okay. think I think so. I know that they did a NECA did a release of him. I have him over there of him and the girl. And then they had the other mm-hmm. two predators and stuff. That 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 whole like what was it? Yeah, eight, yeah. eight figures. Yeah. I think Jeez, the only one I'm okay. missing is the mad predator or whatever that you yeah. that you bought. Yeah. The girl was like a really cool design, like that cool like oh, yeah. girl. Capcom, it's like you could tell us that Capcom animation, like, like she was like a really cool design. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's cool because, like, did y'all ever play uh, Ninja Warriors back in the day? Either the arcade, yeah, yeah. Or the Super Nintendo yeah. version. Um, yeah. that kind of gave me that same vibe. You know, you play, yeah, yeah. yeah. But if y'all, since y'all have never played it, it's great. Um, yeah. it was really cool because you had it was one of the games that implemented implemented the first like two screens for the game so like yeah. you're walking and it's a side scroller beat em up but your robots yeah. sent into a third world country with a, a dictator that you're trying to take out and oh, you're just like fighting like soldiers and you're throwing things at them then you start fighting robots and like other th- <laughs> it's, it's awesome <laughs> it's awesome hard uh, yeah. uh side scroll beat em up yeah um number five is tony hawk pro skater 2 um, I played this a lot with my um, brother Eric. Um, he 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 was the one that mostly got through the game for me. I would always ask him, "Can you help me with this? Can you do this part for me? I can't do it. Just let me get past it." But it never felt as good as when I finally get get to do it myself. Yeah. When you it, you don't get the same feeling of of accomplishment if you have something else to do it. Um, that game, a lot of the um, things you could do, um, like you find the tapes, I think they're called VHS tapes, you can just find them, and unlock certain, uh, certain secrets. Um, the things you could do, the missions, they were just so much fun. You had to spell the word skate, stuff like that. I loved it. And that's mm-hmm. probably where most of my love for skateboarding, too, came in. Mm-hmm. But it's funny because um, you, you got there. 
differently than like most of us who love skateboarding was because we watched these guys and we had a skateboard and stuff. And it's, <laughs> yeah. But but you know you got to play the game version equivalent of that, so it's okay. It's mm -hmm. it's completely fine as yeah. long as we're still yeah. on the same page. You know it's okay. Mm -hmm. Number five, Vector Man Sega Genesis. Hmm. <laughs> it is. It was unique for its time. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I don't know. It, it, to me, that's one of those games where I just remember, again, getting my friends together, playing it. You know, I got it for a Christmas, and I was like, what is Vector Man? <laughs> you know, you hear about Sonic or Mario. You know, what's a Vector Man? <laughs> and, like, you get, these, you get these weapons. He changes forms. and It was just a fun game, and I have so many fond memories of playing it. And so that's why it's my number five. Uh, you'll always have a little special place, you know. <laughs> Dude, mm -hmm. Yeah, that game was and great. You, I and you got to shoot the Sega logo. <laughs> yes, yeah, <I'm> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember renting that one, and I remember like it would be one of the games that they would showcase on the kiosk, at, like if you're at Kmart or Walmart or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe one of the games you could play. <laughs> that was like one of the ones that looked like, like visually, it was like pushing like the technology. Like it looked really good at the time. Mm -hmm. but it was like always like the showpiece or what. Yeah, it's very much the equivalent of like how um what we got with Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, you know, yeah. We we're pushing the stuff like even um like the other two games plus what Stunts Race Stunts Racer FX and I think there's one mm -hmm. other game that like utilized that chipset that even yeah, Paper yeah. Uh, not Paper Mario but uh Mario RPG had a kind of like aesthetic like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Certainly wish I was finished that game, but maybe someday. <laughs> is that a tough one matt or no 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 oh, okay okay i it's just, just never it... really played enough oh sorry mm -hmm. no it's fine it was just different for its time you know um yeah. it, it it was still fun while not being such mm -hmm. a really a mascot character you know mm -hmm. yeah definitely stands out for the time yeah yeah and it got a sequel i mean yeah mm -hmm. in this world of like bringing back retro games i would like to see a sequel another sequel to this in the future you know mm -hmm. well maybe we can with what they're doing with uh, some of the releases of the like, streets of rage and the new the new stuff that sega's doing yeah, yeah. oh i hope so i kind of hope there's a new uh, uh what do you call it? eternal champions also <laughs> oh yes yeah i want a shining force so bad but I oh yeah yeah it's or even happen. yeah even a, like a an a official fantasy star 5 or like the, like the old school style yeah. yes i don't yeah. want online i don't want the side yeah, story yeah. online game that came out that <laughs> it's, it's awful. <laughs> fantasy star for such an amazing mm -hmm. game but i would mm -hmm. yeah like you said proper sequel to that would be amazing mm -hmm. mm. i mean the closest we get now is uh the Star Ocean games, even though they're not connected, but they're still yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this one, um, probably one of the earliest games I ever had. So of course it, it's nostalgic for me. Um, a kung fu. Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, the uh, so this is like when I, we first got a Nintendo. I would say Super Mario Brothers. I would have put that, but that game, like I still play it a lot the original Super Mario Brothers, like at least a couple times a year. But that was the game. Uh, my friend had it, and and because he, he, he had like all kinds of video game consoles. They were, he was a little bit more wealthy than my family, so he would get all these new, like the Commodore and all the older systems before Super Nintendo, or pardon me, before Nintendo. And I would go over there and play, play them, and none of them really caught my attention like Super Mario Brothers when he had that game. So then, all, uh, so then my, my parents caught on to that, and I guess it was the hot item, so they got that Nintendo for Christmas with Super Mario Brothers. Then another game, I guess there was sale, a sale going on, so they got this. Um, and this is like the... Uh, the old, my dad was never really a gamer. He was more like a, 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 like a motorhead. Like, uh, he was a mechanic and worked on cars and, he and motorcycles, and he was never really like a nerdy type guy. But this is the game like he would play the heck out of and like he knew all the secrets. He could beat this game, like run through it twice and, and uh, get get the big heart at the end with, with uh, when Thomas saved Sylvia. 
So it was like cool. That, like my dad would play this game with me, and, and I learned all this stuff. Like he showed me, and I could he, he knew all the tricks, the little bosses to, to every boss. So I would play through this, and like, but uh, I always liked like Bruce Lee movies and Jackie Chan movies, and it kind of had that game of death feel where he's going up the the tower. Yep. Mm. And then I guess it's based on uh, Wheels on Meals, the Jackie Chan movie. Yeah. Such a good movie. And I, I, I love that movie too. But I didn't realize it was based on that. I guess the girl in that movie's name is Sylvia and 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 uh and oh, Jackie Chan's name is, is Thomas and that, but I don't it doesn't really have anything to do with the game, but but the the freaking game and and another thing, like I didn't realize this till later on, it was uh developed by what is that, uh Irem and and uh it was called Kung Fu Master at first, but um the guy that made it was Taka. Takashi Nishiyama that, that made like some of my favorite game series. He did Street Fighter, the original one, and he did Fatal Fury, and he did Kung Fu, like all these cool badass like martial art games. I like he's the one he's the one behind it. And he came back and he did, did Street Fighter Five later on or Four. I'm sorry, but I didn't realize that till later on that that, that guy was behind it. But yeah, just just I remember playing this with my dad. And it was popular with me and my friends too. Like back then, not all games were co-op, but we would always take turns. Like it said there was two players, but it wasn't really just like, oh, you die. Oh, now the second player's turn. Okay. But even back then, I love that was kind of fun, like to seeing who could get farther. Even though it wasn't really a, a two-player game, but like my buddies and I would play all this and and we get stuck on the magician and the moths and all that. It was, Kind of a short game, but it's really satisfying, fun little short game. So that one's a, a what was that number five for me? Not a huge game that I've played that many times. I've, I've played it enough as a kid, but uh, mm -hmm. the story behind this one is a little interesting. Uh, it goes into ties into the very first console I ever owned, which is the Nintendo um, Duck Hunt. Uh. So. Okay. I came home from school one day and I just see my uncle again, the one that showed me about the Commodore 64, showing my, my stepdad at the time, my mom, and everybody else who was there, the Duck Hunt, and the Nintendo was uh, set up and everything, and they were just playing away, and I'm like, oh, cool, you guys brought it over the Nintendo. And I started playing it, and he's like, oh, by the way, happy birthday, this is your system. Oh, but yeah. I didn't even get to open my own Nintendo for the first time, but oh. <laughs> so it was like a weird joke, but at the same time, it was just a lot of fun to play with them at the same time. I don't know. It was just like a gift I mm -hmm. never got to open, but I really enjoyed the moment anyways, <laughs> yeah, despite yeah, that. Yeah. And that's the reason why and then every time I see Doc Hunt played or if I just pick it up for a little bit and play mm -hmm. it. I'm like I always remember that school day mm -hmm. coming home and finding out that I, I got a Nintendo entertainment system for my uncle mm -hmm. just because they were playing Duck Hunt. Yeah. Uh, but the game itself is still a lot of fun too. Like yeah, I always want to try to shoot the dog. But um <laughs> the ducks I can never get too too far, but I like this uh what was it, the clay shooting as well. I, yeah. I did better on that, but no, it was mm -hmm. just a lot of fun and the music notes that they do was cute mm -hmm. and all that, but yeah. the thing was more so how I got the game in the system versus yeah. the game itself, but yeah. Did you get the amiibo that came out where it was the dog and the ducks? No, mm -hmm. I missed a boat on that. Uh, we don't sell them anymore at uh, where I work, but uh, maybe online I'll see if I can find it. That'd be really yeah, cool. To have. You got that. You got Rob the robot, and um, yeah, and he had like the different like. No, it was that. Yeah, it was Rob the robot, and then um, it was the uh, Game and Watch character that had like different oh, nice. poses. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Duck Hunt. It was one of those games that would be frustrating, especially when you got a good score going and you screw mm -hmm. up and the dog comes out and start mm -hmm. laughing. It's like, bop, 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 bop. <laughs> yep. yeah. <laughs> I think we all had our moments on that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But what oh, a way man. to get the, the first Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. Did you get at least get the box? Did you go, well, where's the box, Uncle? Well, the box you know? was right there and everything, oh, too. Oh, so it was I was like, too? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, I just didn't 
like unwrap the present and open up the box and all that because mm-hmm. you were already playing the system and yeah. again, it, was, it was my <laughs> uncle's Nintendo and he's like no happy birthday I'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> it's like what a way to get a hand me down right yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> so for me um it was a little kind of toss up because like I had I had written down Metal Gear Solid 2 and um but I, I think I'm gonna change it because this is something that's I haven't played in a while, and I played it for like ten years, and uh, it's actually how I met my wife, and uh, and that is Final Fantasy XI. Hmm. Uh, oh wow! I played that game. I got a piece. I was so like when we knew it was coming out. Me and my buddy James and uh, a couple other friends were all going to play it. We were all going to get it, and it was only released on the PC at first here. Uh, even though in Japan it was on PS2 and PC. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was working at Best Buy, got it, had a discount, got a PC, and it was one of the ones that was on the like the display model. So it wasn't one of the actual <laughs> one that I didn't have anybody touching it, testing it out. But uh, I ended up getting the game and like I would it consumed my life. Like I was literally playing that game when I wasn't working. And I literally <laughs> was still buying games I wanted to play, and they were just sitting on the shelf, like mm-hmm. not touched, because <laughs> how in <laughs> in like engrossed in this game I was. There was like times I, when it got released on the PS2, I would take my PS2 over to my friends when we were partying and be playing that and drinking at the same time while they were <laughs> whatever they were doing. Nice. Or uh, they were playing Halo, and like I would like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not, I can't get a party, so I'm gonna go play Halo with those guys and then go back on the game whenever I got a party. <laughs> and yeah, but I ended up in the same Link shell, which was like a guild, with my wife, and uh, we uh, would party together. Uh, she was a white mage, and she hears me talking about her right now, <laughs> dancing over here on the screen, <laughs> and. Um, you can hear her laugh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I asked her to, you know, go uh, go have dinner with me and stuff. And then after that, it was, you know, we were inseparable. Found out we had uh, much more in common and connections than than just this game. But uh, yeah, Eleven's one of my most nostalgic. I, like I said, I played it for wow. ten years. What was I that a it. long dis- Was that a long distance, or were you local when you were playing with her on online? So she, I lived on. I think I was in between. I went from Pasadena area to Clear Lake, so maybe okay. like twenty five miles. But my oh, wife so she, was up. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so she was close to you. Well, she was about maybe fifty miles away. Yeah, oh, okay, from, that's not too bad yeah. though. Yeah. yeah but considering yeah. considering you met on a video game, that's. You got it got out pretty good or uh, worked mm-hmm. out pretty good for you. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I have to say that I mean it should be my number one, but I have other yeah, games yeah, yeah. for other reasons that are more nostalgic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I miss it. I miss like just getting on the game and playing. And I met so many friends. I, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you had different classes you could play. It was just fun, like learning how to build a team like you know you would go and party <laughs> and like level up and then do quests and stuff and you got to mm-hmm. know what your job is and mm-hmm. and i took that information into like playing first person shooters when we would do mm-hmm. call of duty or rainbow six and like know how we need to be as a squad yeah. and stuff like that yeah no uh, your tank no your healer no you're the mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah and that was so good yeah. so good is this game still going on or only yep. 14 oh it is still going on um i think it's not as much as it was because i think it was like 12 13 bucks a month um but now with all the changes you can literally just play up to a certain level uh they start charging you and then Hmm. on top of that there's quests you can do that will allow you to have like npcs as your party members so you don't actually have people because there's not as many people playing the game anymore yeah And since yeah, you can do the same and, thing with fourteen, okay. yeah. yeah, and fourteen, you so, can do the same thing too. Yeah. Did you play? And that seems like an ambitious thing to be on a PS2 with. Like it was like a MMO type game. Mm-hmm. That, yep. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I Kinda, like. It was funny. I had the hard drive. Yeah. For, yeah, because you got the hard drive for that, but I remember getting the modem yeah. first to play like yeah. uh, Tony Hawk Online and yeah, uh, yeah. What was it? Uh. 
Twisted Metal and then like yeah, Qualcomm. But did whenever, you ever... go ahead. Did you ever play Resident Evil Outbreak? Oh yes, I played both. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh wow, <laughs> yeah, I played both, and I, I that's the one thing I want Capcom to do. I want them to take that game, modernize it, and re-release mm -hmm. it so people can play that because it was yeah. so good. Uh, I, I don't like think that. you can, you can't even you can't even get to like any of those secret servers now like you can with other PlayStation games. I don't think you can do that with a outbreak. I don't um I think you can do it with one because I think there's a there was a fan group that made it where you could play oh, okay. some of the features don't work as well uh, okay. as it did when it was run by Capcom. Yeah. But yeah, man, such a great time back then. I like it literally oh, like, yeah. I had like you're looking at what was it 2002 I think when that game came out all the way to mm -hmm. like 2010 uh, 2012 and, and and that span of time and like mm -hmm. I was just buying games and then there would be time I'd stop playing play my back catalog for a while and then like get back into the game and I just started building up more stuff and it's like I just can't mm -hmm. do MMOs anymore I can't I just mm -hmm. not doing YouTube and everything else working a uh, working a real job. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. World of, yeah, World of Warcraft almost ruined my life. Like my wife and my brother got me into that. I was like, ah, screw with that. I just like console games and they got me into that. And I like once I went in there, it was just like nothing else. All I did was go to work and I think about it. I gotta go feed my baby dinosaur and then go home and just and then just play that thing all the time. I forgot to pay rent like two times that year. And I had late charges. <laughs> so oh. that I like, get I just had a cold turkey stop it at the, after a year. I haven't played it ever since. <laughs> but it was a cool feeling, you know, when we moved in. Yeah, together, yeah. We, would, like, we had two TVs set up and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's how we had it, yeah. Used, yeah. <laughs> and we just mm -hmm. sit there and play. That's great. That's <laughs> yeah. really awesome. Yeah, my brother and our good friend would come over all with their laptops, and my wife would be on the PC, and I'd be on my laptop. We'd all be in there playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> That was almost my number two. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, was it uh, Tor was really good. The the Old Republic. Oh, yeah, yeah. That a lot. Number four is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 because I met a lot of my friends on that game online, just playing it constantly. Um, yes, um, people have <laughs> way of words on that game. And but it's still fun. You don't, you know, you don't need to mm. listen to them. Or, you know, uh, you can think that's one that just got remastered. Also, yeah. Well, they did yeah. a remaster, okay. and then I think they did a remaster. Yeah, yeah they, did. they did do a remaster that came out during the same time. Uh, Infinite Warfare, I think, came out. Because if you bought the okay. collector's edition or that 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 dual pack, you got that for free. Oh, I did not know that. I just <laughs> I got the original. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun online gameplay. I I I had so much fun. I that's another game. I don't even want to know how many hours I have put into it. That one I really don't want to know though. Number four, Perfect Dark in 64. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, kind of going back to like you was talking about how you saved money and you, you bought this game and it meant something to you. Uh, mm -hmm. That's kind of how Perfect Dark was for me. Um, you know, hot off Goldeneye, we have Perfect Dark, you know, Drana Dark. Uh, the thing that really sold it for me was the <clears throat> multiplayer. You could You could fight against NPCs in multiplayer, right? So mm -hmm. that game, me and my sister played a lot because you could make, um, you can make the NPCs punch, or you can make them tall or short, or you know, look like aliens or whatever you wanted mm -hmm. to do. And so we would play that more than the actual storyline. Um, you know, like there was a a Resident Evil mode where you made one a just tall alien in a trench coat. He was your uh, tyrant. And then uh, the regular people, yeah, and the regular people were your zombies. They would just, just slapped you and you can't see right, you know? And um, so <laughs> I saved up for that game. And then it's like, oh, do you want to play the special version of it? Get the extender for your PlayStation or for your uh, N64. It's 
So I had to save for that as well, you know, not just for the game, but also the, ex the expansion yeah, yeah. pack. So it always it had a special place in my heart because you had the laptop gun, the end mm -hmm. bomb, all these other fun things that you could do. And um, I wish they would remake that actually. Mm -hmm. It would be cool. Yeah. I, I haven't played through it in a long time, but I I do have the rare collection that has it's on there. Oh, that's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. And I didn't realize it has a co-op mode, right? Like you can campaign co-op it, or is that just the mm -hmm. new release on Xbox? I, I believe it's know. in the original. It might okay. be. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was a cool game. Yeah, great game. Yeah, it looks so good. Like, maybe it was just because of that expansion, but like it's probably like the nicest looking and smoothest running FPS on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I I definitely enjoyed that one more than I did. Um, and I know this is gonna be blasphemy, but uh, <laughs> but but Golden Eye. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's one like I think. Uh, uh, crap song golden eye is the world is not enough have you played that yeah that's a dude that's freaking no oh, that's freaking yeah. good yeah <laughs> yeah yeah because it was funny because like the whole reason like everybody loved golden yeah time was just a the multiplayer they didn't care about mm -hmm. the story, mm -hmm. any of that it was just multiplayer <laughs> yeah it was, yeah it was so good at the time huh? yeah yeah but you had to ban odd job because he was too short to shoot yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, this one I don't have a a, a, real, a a copy of this, and it was never released on any consoles. It was only at the arcade, and it probably will never ever be released ever again. Is a WrestleFest the arcade game? Um, the WWF WWF WrestleFest. It was a arcade cabinet similar to Ninja Turtles, where you have the four uh, joysticks, mm -hmm. and and. Uh, so you could go four players at once. Like I was always a big wrestling fan around that time. Ever since I was like a little kid, like through like the mid, like mid eighties to the mid nineties, this uh, arcade game, a wrestle fest. And like me and my buddies were so into wrestling. And back then there was no like internet and there wasn't like a million wrestling shows on like now it was just like maybe a couple of shows a week. So, and we were hungry to watch wrestling like you could go to the, the store and look at the wrestling magazines and that's where you got like your news, like uh, behind the scenes stuff or who's, who's what wrestler maybe is going to show up or whatever. But, uh, and then you just have to like, or we tape wrestling and watch it. That's like the only way uh, we could watch it. But then this arcade cabinet was at the, the arcade. You could like go there and like partake in like WWF, like at all the, the big wrestlers at the time, like Hogan and the warrior and, Jake the Snake, the Million Dollar Man, Earthquake, and uh, Legion of Doom, Demolition. I can name all of them on there. Sergeant Slaughter, the Big Boss Man, um, uh, Demolition. <laughs> but uh, but man, that it was um, like compared to the stuff we had been getting on consoles, that thing like just blew it away. Like they actually looked like the wrestlers. They were all different. They all had different moves. You could have four guys playing at once. You could have two guys on one tag team against two guys on another tag team. You could have uh, uh, one guy put to control one team against a guy controlling another team, or you could do the, the camp or the arcade mode where you and your buddy can team up and go through the, the, the ranks until you fight the Legion of doom at the end. And then, uh, and then you, the, the, the coolest thing was they had Royal rumble or mode where you just put a quarter in you, a wrestler comes into the ring, you choose a wrestler. And that thing was, the, it was kind of almost like Ninja Turtles back then. That was like always in the center of the arcade and all the kids were around it and uh, playing as wrestlers. And you in this big battle, right? Like you're partaking in, in like a, a Royal Rumble with, with all these wrestlers and they all had their, their special moves. And uh, my buddies and I didn't realize how, how it worked back then, like the company has rights to to make the like LJN had it on on the consoles, and that was Technos that had it at the arcade. And I was like, man, why don't they just put this on Super Nintendo? Like, I kind of realized it would be a, a, a watered down version, as all games were back then. But like, man, I want this game on Super Nintendo or Genesis or something, <laughs> but but it never happened. But man, and and that's a game I don't really play that much anymore. Like, I have it on my Pi, but but every time I go back to it, it takes me back to like 1991 or whatever it was when 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 I was super into wrestling and and see like all the kids loved wrestling just like Ninja Turtles and we'd all 
uh, uh, partake in our own little battle royal <laughs> at the arcade. <laughs> yeah. That's so WrestleFest, yeah, WrestleFest number four for me. Who who released that? Did you say? It, it was Technos. Okay. Um, uh, that did Double Dragon. And uh, yeah, I think the developer, the producer, some had worked on the Double Dragons and the uh, like Road Blasters and cool stuff like that. But uh, and I think the first one was tech was a uh, tech um, Taito, so that that really oh, had yeah. like the double uh, WWF superstars was Taito, and it really had that like Taito look like uh, like Double Dragon or, or uh, what is it called uh, Kunio? Yeah, the yeah Kunio Ku or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I can't even remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I like I like both of those like the superstars. I could say the same thing about that, but I think we spent more time uh, playing WrestleFest because we just had more options, like more people could play it. Yeah, I remember like whenever um, what SmackDown and SmackDown Two came out on the PS4, yeah, yeah. PS2, and then yeah, so you had uh, India NWO versus the World. Yeah, that was so good. Yeah. If you got the the Japanese version, it had all the actual Japanese wrestlers. And yeah, some wrestlers. I was like, why did we yeah, get yeah. this? Here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw Tibro and got that one. That one looks really cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Never played any of those. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't really get into wrestling until. Uh, I mean, I watched it as a kid, but it wasn't mm-hmm. yeah. what I gravitated to. But yeah. Like it wasn't until like WCW that I was like really kind of hooked on for a while, and then they when they yeah. Were, I watched that for a bit and then yeah i kind of lost interest after they bought out wcw because I, I love wcw <laughs> for my number four this was a little bit more of a tough one um it's just more so because there's a few different games that could have i guess went here but whenever i would go to those family dinners as a kid uh for like christmas or easter we would go to the one side of the family and a mm-hmm. bunch of people are there. So a bunch of us kids would play on the NES or and all that. But we went to this one family and remember those 101 in games or 68 in one games and things like that. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck is this? So pop it in and start going through the list of the games, like playing Bomberman and Battle City, like Dig Dug 2, which I played a lot of. Uh, it's just, I guess you can kind of group those games together as one because it was technically on one mm-hmm. cartridge there, but it was more about like having a lot of fun playing those because a lot of them were two player games and playing with my cousins mm-hmm. and things like that. Then we'll have dinner and then go back to the game and play it again. And, uh, I guess that's why it was a little tougher to put it just at one game, but you know, there was a bunch of games you could play in there. And I think the few that stood out for me was like Bomberman and Dig Dug mm-hmm. 2 and things like that. Burger Time was uh, another lo- lot of fun, but such a hard game. But um, yeah, I guess technically that would be all like one four, one mm-hmm. and slot mm-hmm. four for me here, but yeah, it was just a lot of good memories uh around those um holidays and things like that yeah playing those yeah. games together with family i didn't really have but, access to those compilation stuff like that yeah yeah i didn't realize they had stuff like that until until like recently yeah i don't even know where they got that, to be honest yeah with that's you. pretty that's pretty that's pretty cool <laughs> i asked and i'm like oh well, I, they don't know <laughs> what well, how did you get them? <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, like back then in the eighties, I remember there was like ROM hacks. Well, I didn't even know that stuff. They they could do that back then. Like there was a an arcade in a at a water slide park that had like this ROM hack of Super Mario Brothers, where like all the sprites look different and like they did look like different creatures. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You ever seen those arcade um, like? The, the actual setup arcade but they would have nes games like yeah uh, yeah the Chip play choice yeah the, yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah yeah play choice 10 yeah yeah that almost was another one of my yeah those possibilities are possibilities cool. here too but yeah um well you think about like uh you know that was kind of almost the precursor to what neo geo was doing with their, yeah you know mm-hmm. eight four and one or eight and one yeah, yeah. Cabinets where they actually had the actual cart in there that you could actually just take out and put it in the system. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But man, that yeah, that's definitely something that I could have been on the list here for in this pretty mm-hmm. much for me. Like Fatal Fury and, and oh, Metal yeah. Slug and uh, yeah. oh yeah, definitely. Project Eight Man. Mm-hmm. Oh man, so many good games. Mm-hmm. The amount of hours I put into Metal Slug and Fatal Fury. Oh yeah, I love those. Those mm-hmm. are fun. Especially since Fatal Fury has an anime now, uh, that's my other big. Passion. Oh wait, there's there's an anime of it, or you mean the one yeah. from the like the nineties? Is there a new the one? 90, uh, no, uh, I, so, I, I think there's yeah, like was... three movies. I think. I think. Yeah, I love those. Yeah, there's Fatal Fury the movie, and then there's Fatal Fury two, and then there's Fatal Fury the motion picture, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those. Uh, Hungry the like a wolf or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. But. Uh... City of the Wolves is coming out soon. Oh yeah, <laughs> and that guy says yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um. So my number four is going to be Command and Conquer: Tiberian Sun. I've always been a Command and Conquer fan. Right. Of course, you got the F and V cutscenes, but like one of the okay. things that pulled pulled me in was like having Michael Bean and James Earl Jones. In this game, as character, dude, that's freaking that's sick. awesome. And yeah, I I remember getting it for my birthday because it came out, and then like I had to wait till my birthday. So I was like, it was like eight, I think August twentieth, and then my birthday was the seventeenth of September. So I'm like, dang it, I gotta mm-hmm. wait this long to get to play this <laughs> game. And then uh, just installing. I just remember like nights being in my room, just having my the lights off, right just my monitor screen and be playing and you just see the glow of the Tiberium and just the, just the effects of the game and just yeah, playing, right. playing hours and hours. And like my dad be like, Hey, you need to go to bed for school. Okay, dad. And laying down and going to sleep and come home. <laughs> that's all I did was play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, then don't even think about like the, like playing online against other people. I mean, it was, that was fun too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love yeah, these things back then. Thank you. Was there ever a port of that to any console? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, no, not type. Well, Command and Conquer One got ported to PlayStation and sixty four. Mm-hmm. Uh, Red Alert got ported to PlayStation, and then uh, I know they were talking about doing Tiberian Sun, but they couldn't figure out how to implement the whole point click aspect. Yeah, of yeah. work very well with the controller. Yeah. Um, when they did like Commander Conquer three and then um Red Alert three and four, that was all mm-hmm. that was on the Xbox and PlayStation. They yeah. figured out a way to yeah. do it. But what was cool about like Red Alert Two, you had Tim Curry in it, you had uh yeah. oh, yes. mm-hmm. There's, like so many great actors, and that that was really cool because that was one of the ones that my grandmother got me. Um because I had totally like I was playing Command and Conquer, but I didn't play the Red Alert series as much. Mm-hmm. But like whenever she got it free for doing something and I was playing, I was like, holy crap, Tim Tim Curry's in this. <laughs> That's tight. Yeah. But uh and it, it's cool because like even like the later uh Command and Conquer games, they had still had the FMV stuff and it was just amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Never played any of them, but I have played uh Similar style games <laughs> that I really enjoy, mm-hmm. like StarCraft and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I guess the new release of Age of Empires on Xbox—they're all proud of how they've uh, got it down, like playing it with the controller. Like there, there's some new special will. Like they're really proud of the the control scheme. They've they finally mastered it on a on a controller. But I, I don't I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, the Total War was pretty fun. Uh, I got released. Uh, there's a couple other RTSs that have been pretty nice. Like even uh, the Halo ones, the Halo oh, Wars, yeah, yeah. 1 and 2, that yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. I love RTSs. I, I would love to play more of them, but I don't play enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Number three is Need for Speed World. Um, this was an online game, and it was online only. There was no offline version at all. It came out, I think, like 2010, maybe 2009, and it they shut down the servers 2012. It was a very short um, lifespan of the game, 
Um, I another one. I met a lot of my friends on there. I mean, I don't think there was many players as there is now because they brought back the servers. You know how like some people would do like Halo for the mm-hmm. original Xbox brought back servers for that. Well, mm-hmm. Need for Speed World they really brought back the servers. They called it something different because well, EA. I don't think you know they're like that. <laughs> so it's called like Soapbox Racing World, but it's the same game. It's just. Like it literally has the EA when you open it up and everything. Mm-hmm. Same thing. It's just when you launch it and stuff goes to soapbox racing. That's about it. Uh, all right, number three. I have Mega Man X. Mm. Now, here's the thing. Keep your pitchforks and your torches away from me. Um, I've never <laughs> played any of the Mega Man X's except for this one. Hmm. And uh, this was in high school, 10th grade, and I had two friends who, we were pretty smart, right? And what would happen is the teacher put on the board three math problems, and they would go to lunch, and she'd teach us, you know, how to do the math. Well, that's a 15-minute wait before we had lunch, and we proved to her that we knew how to do it. We'd look into our books, figure out how to do it, prove to her we could do it for the rest of class. We got to play on the computer. So my friend had a emulator and ROM of Mega Man X. So instead of doing classwork, we were playing Mega Man X. And we we aced our test. As long as we aced our test, you didn't <laughs> care. But uh, a lot of the jocks got upset with us about that. <laughs> we wonder they get to not, because they know it, you know? And so that always holds a special place in my heart that, yeah, we're a little smarter than you, and and a boo boo, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's, it's always that special place in my heart. Oh, Heck yeah, like X That's is awesome. so good. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you if you play any other Mega Man X game, just play X four, you'll be fine. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. I feel that like one and and four are the best. All the other ones just they're okay. Mm. But they don't hold a candle to those two. But okay. I do have a story similar to that. Like in high school, like my last <laughs> senior year, I would like finish my work before anybody. And my teacher would let me pull out my Game Boy and I'd sit there and play Pokemon. Oh, no, nice. Right. Right. nice. Just writing class. <laughs> similar note, I would be playing Lemmings uh, if I got my, finish my work fast enough at, uh, mm-hmm. at school. So. That's funny. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> okay, so are no, already on number three. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this one uh, always near and dear to my heart, and I try not to play it that much. I don't know why. Like like it's kind of an uh, overwhelming game. Like uh, I know a lot of people can speed run it really quick, but it's still kind of a struggle for me. But I really enjoy it. Is uh, the Legend of Zelda for for NES the original yeah. one? This is probably my favorite of the Zelda series. Um, there are a couple others might be up there, but this is the one that I, like brings me the most nostalgia. Um, was because I had never really played anything like this. And it was like all the kids, it was before the internet, of course. So all the kids at school would be talking about it. And you kind of have to like rely on kids at school to know where, how to solve a puzzle or know where a dungeon entrance is mm-hmm. or, or uh, know where to bomb. Um, I don't remember if there was a guide. I had the uh, official Nintendo's player guide and I still have it, but it only covered the first four dungeons. Uh, but we would. My, my friend and I would write down for the second quest. We wrote down on that. My guide is ruined because we wrote down all the locations of the <laughs> the bombable rock or the, the burnable bushes. We wrote it all on there for the second mission in that in that guide because it has the map in there. Um, <laughs> but this game, I remember, uh, I don't know why, the, uh, where I live right now, um, there's a grocery store and, and a gym around the corner. And, uh, and I remember I got this game at the mall, I think, or my mom got it for me for, it was either my birthday or, or uh, 
or I don't know if it was like the last day of school and like she would usually get us something if we, uh, the last day of school. But I remember I had the game in, in the car and she parked and she pulled off at that, that the, the grocery store where we shop at now is like the same one that when I live with my mom, when we were kids, she shopped at it. It's called the grocery outlet. It's really like a really cheap grocery store. And, uh, I remember I was just sitting in the car, like she went in to get the groceries and I just waited in there because I, I wanted to look at the manual and I took it out. And it was all shiny. Like, oh, there's like, I just got gold. Like I just got the Wonka ticket or something. It's like a gold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was re- looking at the manual. Like it had all the little creatures names and everything. Like, wow, this is like something special. Like there's no games like this because there hadn't been like these open games like that. But I just remember sitting in that parking lot. And it's right here where I, I live too. Like so, like every, kind of every time, like I go to Taco Bell or go to that grocery store, I still like think of like sitting in, in the car there and looking at this. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, this thing. And then, like I said, like all the the the, um, the interaction with all your buddies at, at school and all your friends about like, oh, you don't know a secret, but someone else at school might know the secret. And it's and it just felt like an overwhelming thing. Like, like it seemed like I know it wasn't that long, probably not as many hours as I spend on games now. But it just seemed like I would be playing this thing for hours, and and there would still be way more and more hours to go on it. <laughs> it, just, it seemed like a, a grand adventure back then. Yeah. So Zelda was is my number number three, right? Yeah. Number three. Yeah, three. Yeah. Man, I was so lost in that game when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so much fun, great music, yeah. great adventure. Yeah, oh, that's another thing, yeah. Just the thought of exploring and Yeah. Uh, oh man, this is way different than playing like Super Mario or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And fun then game. at the at, at the core of it too, it's a pretty fun, like I guess you could call it like kind of like a shooter, like an overhead, like sometimes you get into those hairy air, those areas that get kind of right. hairy like there's all the dark nuts and the wizard robes coming at you and so it's kind of a fun like little challenging segments in that game like even if it wasn't like a big open-ended thing like certain little sections are pretty fun and challenging like yeah. the certain little segments of the dungeons yeah you always make sure you had full hearts you can yeah yeah yeah. Shooting part. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You sort out yep yep yeah uh, who would have thought that this game is like one of the last in the timeline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, man. oh you boy. know, it's, it's funny too, because you think about like when Morimoto was come up with the idea for that game and stuff, and you talk about like just walking through the forest and just walking, yeah. and, like wanted to create this thing. And it's like, what do you teach kids in this game to go around lighting trees on fire <laughs> so they can find the secret pass? Yeah. And it's like bombing Rocking. Bombing, yeah, bombing things. It's like you just created a generation of uh, of uh, random crazy people, but that yeah. never happened. Mm-hmm. But, uh, uh, I have memories, man. It, that, only yeah. you can prevent bad. forest fires. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. It has that that wonderful fantasy. Like you get that. You remember when you used to watch like fantasy movies when you were a kid? It gave you that wonderful like. Uh, not really nostalgia but that really like uh, your imagination mm-hmm. so, some kind of endorphin that is released like these fantasy movies like where just imagination goes wild uh, like when you watch these old fantasy movies when we were kids like uh, like never ending story or the last unicorn or something or, or legend it kind of captured that type of feel in, in this video game yeah ah, that's what I loved about it yeah or three for me mm-hmm. Uh, so this is going to go and coincide with your Resident Evil thing. So we were talking about Resident Evil, but my my theory is uh, a little bit more modern. Probably the most modern game I'm going to put on the list here is uh, Silent Hill. But I'm going to preface this with Silent Hill 2 first. Um, oh, yeah. I have played Silent Hill 1 first and then 2. Um so by that point, I've already played Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 2, and mm-hmm. uh, like I was saying before, that uh, my friend was getting me to play those so I can unlock everything because, you know, I'm mm-hmm. pretty good at those. And I'm like, I was getting annoyed at survival horror games at that point. I'm like, okay, I'm tired. I don't want to play. Then he's like, ah, oh, I got Silent Hill. Let's try it out. I'm like, another one of these? Great. <laughs> um, 
So I played it. I'm like, yeah, that is that was interesting, weird, not as good as I thought it would be. Uh, because you know, I thought Resident Evil was the the goat at the time. Yeah. Then I heard about Silent Hill 2 for the PS2. So I played Silent Hill 2, and I thought, wait a minute, there's something else about this series now. What a storyline! What a game! Didn't like James at the end, but I could understand mm-hmm. his point of view. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to play Silent Hill 1 over again. Kind of like what happened with you. Uh, mm-hmm. I think you were saying that, Tyler. Um, so I went back and played Silent Hill 1 and I couldn't stop playing it after that. I just fell in love with that very, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, just left enough stuff out of the game for you to think and yeah, yeah. um the music was fantastic even though yeah. it was like so creepy and done mm-hmm. weird and then you yeah, understand a little bit of the story but there's some stuff that's like open up for interpretation and with that i thought you know what this is way better than resident evil in my opinion silent hill series mm-hmm. is my favorite uh survival horror and I'll play it from time to time, part one. Uh, three is my favorite Three's good. hot take. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what I loved about Silent Hill 1, it vitalized me, revitalized me with the whole survival horror. So I would go out there and play all the Resident Evils now, uh, mm-hmm. Fatal Frame, and all these obscure ones and things mm-hmm. like that. And it became my second uh, favorite genre in video games and so i am happy that they made part two it put me back into playing part yeah. one which is such an amazing game um, yeah and yeah it's it, it's that feeling it's like oh wait yeah i i can't wait for another silent hill game in which i'm hoping it'd be good but anyway mm-hmm. it's all different discussion in itself but mm-hmm. uh, that is i guess would be my number three is just Again, it has that cheeky uh, dialogue like Resident Evil, but not yeah. as yeah. crazy, yeah. I guess. But uh, it's actually a lot better. But it's t- <laughs> it still has that little charm yeah, yeah, yeah. to it. You're like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I see where they were going in 1999 yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, Silent Hill, awesome yeah. game. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I never understood mm-hmm. the debate between Resident Evil and Silent Hill, where Resident Evil is more of your sci-fi um horror you know Mm -hmm. silent hill is more like your dante's inferno right with the exception of the first game people are being put into this hellish landscape why are they here Mm -hmm. what are they going Mm -hmm. through and i think that second game really driven oh yeah there was such a good story Uh, Um, how did how did you feel about the remake of the first game uh frozen memories Oh, uh, Shattered Memories. Okay. Uh, I don't want to say I have different titles, but, you know, different releases yeah. and all that. I actually enjoyed it. I like the idea that it was much more psychological because your choices would change how the person looked, how they acted towards you, how even just the building, uh, your house would be different and things like mm-hmm. that. Uh, I didn't like the monsters so much because they were annoying, <laughs> but... I played it and I love the story of it. It was mm-hmm. a nice remake, considering it all. Um, still, though, I was just chasing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, the psychological aspect, uh, I'm mm-hmm. glad they kept that in there uh, more so, uh, even though most of the Silent Hill games are like that. Uh, yeah. Like you were saying, for the most part, it's you put there, but why? We mm-hmm. we kind of get it with part one. He's there because of his, uh, you know, uh, adopted daughter and things right. like that. Um, no, I I did enjoy Shattered Memories. I thought it was really neat. Uh, it definitely played on the uh, I think the Wii version because you mm-hmm. do these motions. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, it's a good game. I recommend mm-hmm. uh, trying out Shattered Memories if you haven't played it. Right, mm-hmm. that, that's, that's the, the reason one. why. Okay. That's the reason why I brought it up because, you know, again, if the person's brought into Silent Hill for their, their hellscape, um, I can't remember the name, uh, Henry? 
is the guy in the first game? Yeah, uh, Harry. Harry. Oh, sorry. Harry. Yeah, yeah, Harry Mason. He, yeah. Yeah, he was just Henry's yeah, part four. It. Part four. Yeah. Yeah, he was pulled into it, and we don't know why, except for his, like you said, his adopted daughter. So why is he being punished? With the with the remake, I feel like it gave him a reason to be punched, like based on mm-hmm. your decisions. Yeah. So that, that was yeah. very interesting. And what a twist ending to uh, the game for mm-hmm. Shadow Memories. Um, I don't know if anybody else played it, but mm-hmm. yeah, I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't mm-hmm. played it. The twist ending yeah. to that, I was my jaw hit the floor mm-hmm. when I'm like, oh, mm, wow. really? That's what happened? Okay. But yeah. So that's one of the cool things about each game that they release. It expands on the lore and the mythos of what's going on because yeah. mm-hmm. um, with two, you find out that it's a, and the reason why it's affecting people is because it, it gravitates towards people or it pulls people into a purgatory of their own making. So yeah. and yeah. It, it is defined by what they did for it to call them because it's cultivating souls for it to grow. And that's where they play up on four is the fact that it, Silent Hill is expanding beyond its borders and affecting the towns around it. That's why like, and you know, you're, you're dealing with the main villain in that who was in the psych ward that was in Silent Hill and has connections to things in it. So it was, it was really cool. And I, that's why I like the room a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. Especially when you're trying to figure out this stuff and you have to deal with the ghosts and stuff of people that die that you can't save and, uh, running out of equipment and stuff, so it makes it harder for you to complete the game. Um, that's what actually what happened to me. I ran out of ammo and all this other stuff. Oh, no. and I had to find a way to finish the game. But three's great too. Three kind oh, of yeah. the whole thing of like, you know, even though she was reborn and everything, but she was still being pulled because she is the vessel that yeah. Samuel wanted to take and stuff and Mm -hmm. it's like i think that's the problem though with like with what they did with downpour and uh what was the other one homecoming Uh, uh, homecoming Homecoming. yeah they weren't as good i mean they didn't kind of like it was like Mm -hmm. let's just capitalize on what's going on yeah they Mm -hmm. i enjoyed them for what they were obviously they're not going to be the same level as like two and three especially Mm -hmm. and four Mm -hmm. to some levels like you were saying um but I don't know. I, I did enjoy them for what they were, but yeah, yeah I get you. I get what you're saying with the uh, homecoming and uh, uh, downpour. Mm-hmm. Um, I am because I didn't play Origins, which is the whole truck driver that starts the whole thing. That starts. Oh, that's a good game. one too. It's yeah. actually a good yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, that would definitely be on my list. I it's, I have memories of playing. I remember getting to getting to the point where you go to the museum, the history museum and like going, Hey dad, you want to come and watch me play this game? Because well, sometimes I would do that. Like, <laughs> I'd buy, you know, cause like even when I stream now, it's like, usually I'm streaming for my dad to, to, to be able to watch what I'm playing. Cause he can't play mm-hmm. games. Anymore. So, but I used it as an excuse to have someone there with me while I was playing this game. That was a freaking. <laughs> <me out. Yeah. laughs> so. Yeah. Heck yeah. I also like the uh, I really like the pacing of the first game like uh, I like I said I just beat that for the first time last year and I played through it like four times like I loved it like I always thought it was going to be really slow and methodical but it's actually like Harry runs around pretty fast and he draws that gun fast and there's like a nice satisfying like bang when he shoots the gun and there's like a good reaction from the the enemies and it's almost it's nothing like Resident Evil where you're you're locked up into one area and you're you're uh, you're unlocking different sections of the mansion. This is like many different Resident Evils in one city. Like it's it's almost like there's dungeons. Like you're in the city, yes. yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, you're, you're going around for you, the the freaking schoolhouse is amazing atmosphere, amazing like uh, level design for like a dungeon. And then like the uh, the hospital is so good. And then Especially the last, we hit the other world, the the, the oh, other yeah. world, yeah, oh yeah. And there's like kind of yeah. like two sections of every of every uh, dungeon. Then by the time you get to that last dungeon, there's no map. It's called like nowhere. It's so freaking creepy. Like I've never been creeped out in a game like that. Like because you don't know where you are and the physics don't work. Like you go up an elevator and you end up on the same 
the same floor like there's no map it's so confusing and everything's so so rusty and, and dilapidated and scary looking and there's tough enemies everywhere and it just it and and i think it's like really nice looking game for playstation like especially considering that's like the first generation of uh, 3d graphics because i think because i like, get so dark and foggy like they can really put a lot of detail into the small area you're in so it looks really darn good like the lighting effects and everything mm -hmm. like yeah and that, that last dungeon is just so freaking creepy <laughs> Fun fact about the fog, that's uh yeah. they use that as a loading technique. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, and it works good, yeah. Yeah. Because Resident yeah. Evil was doing the doors, but they're like yeah, they yeah. wanna make it almost seamless. So yeah, they use the it, fog as their mm -hmm. cloaking yeah, it, the loading, which I'm like, yeah. that's clever. I like that. Yeah, it is. But it also yeah. became a staple of Silent Hill. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's also one of the things too. It helps with hiding the jank, the things that you can't. Yeah. Use yeah. With the texture and some things may not pop yeah. in. Right? And mm -hmm. stuff, yeah, so it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. And oh, if man. you beat the game, you can get. Uh, I didn't realize you can unlock over the shoulder mode in that game. So it's kind of like Resident Evil Four before that, and you can get that alien gun. And he has a laser sight, so like I was playing this, like wow, like there was a game kind of like Resident Evil Four before <laughs> Resident Evil. Four. Yeah, yeah. It, I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love the yeah, lightsaber. Yeah, yeah. Part yeah. three, Part three, the beam yeah. saber. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You just get it from a door handle. <laughs> yeah. That was great. The one, uh, yeah, three. I got the machine gun. If you beat the last boss without using a gun, like you get the machine, the infinite machine gun, and it makes it so much more fun and, and like not as stressful. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I can go on and on about Silent Hill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We definitely, we could definitely come back on an episode where yeah, we talk yeah. about horror games at some point for October. Yeah. Well, that sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Let me see. Uh, my number three. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. So I just played the remake of it. Mm. And then the thing is, is like, it's so nostalgic for me because anytime I play seven, Final Fantasy seven, um, I get transported back to like being 16, being in my mm -hmm. living room with my cat next to me, you know, and just playing that game. It just like, I, instantly mm -hmm. always get transported back so i remember like going to eb games at a mall pre-ordering the game getting my the t-shirt and the pre-order disc the uh, places underground and mm -hmm. like taking that home and just playing that over and over again just like absorbing all the information <laughs> yeah um and then getting the call that the game came out i think because they it's weird because they say that uh, it came out. I remember it was it was uh, nine seven ninety seven. But if you go look that up on the calendar, that's like a Saturday or something like that. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, I got this on a school day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, so either there's a a rift in time with something, or it's just that you know because we had uh, leap years and stuff, the calendar changes and stuff. So well, don't they call it that the Mandela effect? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I remember getting out of school, my buddy jonathan telling me hey my mom's taking me over to get your copy uh, get his copy of the game do you want me to do you want to ride with me to go do that i said no i gotta wait for my dad so i went home waited for him to come home we rushed over there just before they closed got the game came back played it until about one o'clock in the morning he's like you got to go to bed no i don't want to go to bed <laughs> <laughs> uh because like it was a school day the next day or whatever so i was like what and but i remember playing and going through that game getting the Sephiroth within like five days I literally just played that game that's all I did I went to school came home and played the game my sister was watching me my dad would watch me uh, and then got the Sephiroth and that, there's that whole story too I've talked about where we had Madcott memory cards and my save data got corrupted because I went back to go and try to get uh stuff for the uh, and I should have waited till Tyler came back and I went through this whole story I'm sorry about that. I, I, That's I okay. I didn't even think about that. it. I just yeah. uh, seven. Final Fantasy seven is my uh, yeah 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 yeah. I knew, yeah. So um, but yeah, we I got the Sephiroth. Literally couldn't beat him because I got to the the his second form before you fight him in the yeah. Uh, world. And I went to go. I couldn't beat him. Went to go get 
two mega elixirs that you can get in the uh, northern crater and then came back, oh, saved it because we had to go do something, came back, my game was like corrupted. Oh, um, God. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. <laughs> I was, so I was like, I, I, I took whatever I could money wise. I just went and got a memory card and yeah. I was not going to, and I, I had a disdain for Madcott products all the time and it's hilarious i went to a tournament for tony hawk pro skater 4 and was winning the whole way through but they only had two controllers one official brand and then one mad cats i got stuck with the mad cats in the final run of my game and i lost mm -mm. <laughs> yeah it was i was pretty angry i imagine so <laughs> yeah. uh yeah, yeah. But yeah, and so it's cool getting to play Remake and Rebirth and mm. reliving that nostalgia, reliving yeah. the things that I feel and stuff. And it just, it sucks yeah. because like when Remake came out, my cat at the time that I had, uh, Gizmo, sat on my lap, played it, was oh. with it the whole time. Yeah. Uh, we ended up losing him back during around COVID and stuff. But my new cat I have that I've had for about three years is like, I ain't sitting on your lap. I'm going to be independent <laughs> on this couch over here. It's like, oh, dang it. I can't get that nostalgia feeling. But, yeah, good game. Yeah, I can't imagine playing that. So back in the day when that came out, I was not interested in RPGs, let alone turn-based ones. And I thought it looked cool. Like I had friends that would play the Final Fantasies, and I loved the music and the art style and all that. And like it was really appealing to me, that Final Fantasy VII and all those games. But... I just was not into to turn base. I guess but I, I didn't think I was smart enough to understand how that worked. Like I didn't really understand that turn based stuff. <laughs> but recently, uh, when I maybe like when I was forty, my buddy uh, uh, power player Paul gave me a copy of it with the guide, and I go, you know, I, I'm going to get down on RPGs because I'm starting to get into them in my older age, and I played through that thing, the the PlayStation One version. And like it was like a religious experience. Like, and I'm 40 years old. I feel like I'm like 16 again, play, or 13 playing a video game. Like, man, if I would have known like it was like this when I was a kid, like this, this would would have would have changed my life. <laughs> this yeah. game, like I'm 40 years old playing it. Like, this game is something special. And it was nice having the guide to uh, like referring to that instead of looking on the internet. It kind of like takes me back to like the the time of how playing games was back then and i didn't even bother like the the the, the character models look really crappy like on the map and like even that like i overlooked that like i just tried to put myself back in that time when i played through that whole thing and i got to seth roth uh, uh, oh you know what my my uh my save data got corrupted i was playing it on ps vita and I got pissed off. And that's when my friend Paul said, no, no, don't you got to start over. And he sent me the, the, the disc <laughs> to play on my, <laughs> my old my, my old school. And then I played through it all. And it was freaking amazing. I got to Seth Roth and lost just like you. But I went and got the, the Knights of the Round. And then I went back and I just killed him in one hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's an but, man, I, but just like going through that movie, some parts it feels like it's a like it's so well made it feels like almost like a, a classic movie or something like it's just uh, something about it is, is like timeless as you are been playing uh the remake and rebirth i've been doing that too i'm like oh probably 120 hours into rebirth now mm -hmm. uh, to be fair i did enjoy seven whenever it first came out i beat it in like a week um beat those weapons in, in like a few days that was a yeah i got rid of these million hit point enemies and enjoyed the story and everything after a while i had a tough time playing seven and i think mm -hmm. it's because i played it so many times mm -hmm. and it's like okay i'm just used to the story it's mm -hmm. simple it, it felt simplistic to me by that mm -hmm. point especially playing six where it kept got actually won and you just go yeah. and beat them up at this point. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, you you destroyed our planet. We're going to kick your ass anyway. Like, you know, but um, after playing Remake and Rebirth, it makes me want to try again to go through the game and see if I can get back to that uh, love, love that love. I had for it mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. in 97. 
and all that. So I that's my thought on seven, the original, anyways. And mm -hmm. to this day, it still has an amazing soundtrack. Uh, this, the characters are fun and all that. Um, well, so I might be streaming it someday. Uh, the original. Oh heck yeah! So my two cents in the. Final mm -hmm. Fantasy. And this is coming from a huge Final Fantasy fan of, of yeah. all the games. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Matt, do you have any nostalgic for 7? I mean, uh, not nearly as, as much as you guys. Um, I, I do have it, the Greatest Hits version of PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And um, it was definitely something that, you know, a good storytelling game pulls you in, right? And it keeps you thinking about it, especially like uh, what was it? You were talking about World of Warcraft earlier. Um, well, you're at work or you're at school or something, and you're thinking about well, what can I do to get to the past, the next boss or the next yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. story. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's how I feel about you know just any of the Final Fantasy games is once you get soaked up into the story, you start thinking like, how can I progress? What can I do? Um, I want to mm -hmm. play the the remake so bad, but it's kind of mm -hmm. been like on the back burner right now so that's why mm -hmm. i've been watching um that level podcasting like I, i've been playing it through his eyes and enjoying <laughs> yeah. it yeah <laughs> well there's times when vince is playing uh on the stream i'm playing it at the same yeah, time, the same yeah, time. Yeah. solidarity <laughs> so yeah no i get that i for me the one of the things too about like what resonates with seven is like i don't know um the connection between cloud like being a grown up in a single parent home you know i did you know my dad mm -hmm. uh the like i love going back to it because like i had a girlfriend that kind of looked like tiff at the time you know and i uh so there's just this nostalgia there beyond just mm -hmm. the games like this the association with certain things but uh i'm at the point now where it's like i have fun breaking the game so like i love just getting all the limit breaks except for the like the last one and then just cheesing the game like <laughs> mm -hmm. having the right materia sets where i can like literally just destroy bosses and like like you know uh emerald weapon and uh ruby weapon you just destroy them you know mm -hmm. having it to where like counter magic uh counter magic materia with like quadra magic and then having that link to knights of the round and or death that's like uh. Yeah, you just you just let it happen, and and they're dead. <laughs> I mean, but part of the fun part was trying to set up things to be able to get lucky seven, you know, because that was really cool to be able to do that a couple of times. But it's it's really hard to pull yeah, off. It's yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But but it definitely takes me back. Takes me back mm -hmm. to a, a much better time. Not that my time right now is bad or anything, but like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not having to care about anything, you know, school was the most stressful thing you ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think about that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Need for Speed Underground 2 was another one. And this one, I, this one, I put so many, I, I, I just, I have to be over the, over 200 hours. I put, I, cars is one of my favorite things to play. Anything racing, I'll play it as long as I can. If I could go three days straight with playing it, I could. I would. I, I would do it. I, I love the customization of the cars. Um, the way you can customize like the rim, the spoiler, everything. It's just so much fun. Mm -hmm. Something I would add to um, that though too is the open worldness of the second game because the yeah, first game yeah. is very <clears throat> level selecty. Um, that was one of my really favorite kind of things. Around. I, I mean, the weird thing I, I love doing, I, I, I wouldn't want to do it in real life, but um, Need for Speed Underground 2, um, you could crash into cars and it would have like a little um, slow motion and it would show you, you know, car crashing. Yeah. Um, that would, I don't know why. I just love watching it. And I, I'm like, <laughs> that's just what I want to do it. And then you start realizing when you get older, you do not want to do that. <laughs> that's one thing you don't want to do. But um yeah I I love this game um I think I have it on everything to be honest here because if I'm like on the go I'll play it on my laptop or if I'm home I'll play it on PlayStation Two 
and I think the reason why I have it on every system, not just because I love it, is because I like the different graphics you can do. One, yeah. I think PlayStation 2 is the darkest because it wasn't a really powerful system. Um, GameCube was a little bit upper, and then, of course, PC is the best. And there's even mods you can put onto the game for PC to make it look like a 4K game. Oh, wow. Well. So I did struggle with this one. Um, again, it was originally World of Warcraft, but there was one game that stuck out just a little further than the rest. And it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Radical Rescue. Um, it's It was a Metroidvania before Metroidvania was a thing, right? Um, I feel like it actually predicted The Last Ronin, spoilers, because Mikey <laughs> is the one turtle that didn't get kidnapped. And you have to save the your brothers, right? And sure. you have to save Splinter in April. And you have to make your way around you know, the map because it's not like a, a straightforward game. You may need Leonardo because he drills in the ground. You may need Donatello. He climbs the walls. You may need Raphael. He goes in a shell and goes under the small space. So it was it was an amazing Game Boy game. And it's it's tough. If you haven't played, I'm gonna ahead and warn you, it's a it's a tough game. But if you stick with it and you learn the patterns of the enemies, yeah, you can get through it. But it's definitely a, a fun Game Boy game. And of course, you get the the awesome turtles music in the background. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. No. Yeah, I, I wish I would have known about that game. I didn't know about it until that new compilation came out. Like I didn't realize there was a Metroidvania type Ninja Turtles game on Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I missed it too. I mean, yeah. for me, I didn't even get a Game Boy until a Game Boy Color. You know, <laughs> that was the first yeah. time I had a Game oh, Boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we got uh, Vince's favorite regular vanilla Street Fighter Two. <laughs> 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 I, I was gonna, I was, I was gonna use. I'm just using this as a, a. Well, I guess I could include this with the arcade one. I was gonna say the arcade version is the thing that brings me a lot of nostalgia. Um, but this one does too. The the Super Nintendo version. And, and uh, like I, I play Super Street Fighter all the time to this day in Super Street Fighter Turbo, but this is the one I don't really play that much anymore. So it's uh, it still has that 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 nostalgic feel for me. Um, because like the first time I like I had never even heard of Street Fighter One, and one time at the arcade at a, at a Rico's Pizza we have there was this game there. And like uh, the, the the visuals of this thing are like like nothing before it. Like there's so much so many frames of animation and the big characters and they're really detailed, and they're all really unique and like a, and a memorable like looking characters in this game. And so when you first see this game and, and all the cool backgrounds and the music, like I think every track on this game is a banger. I mean, it's all kind of like it uh, represents like the the na- the nation they're in. It has a little bit of a flavor of whatever nation they're in when they fight. But just like the whole package of this thing was like unlike anything I'd ever seen. So I was probably like what like eleven when I saw this at the arcade, and and I was into pro wrestling. And then there was Zane Geef, and he's picking up people and pile driving them and doing <laughs> suplexes. <laughs> and, and, um, and uh, I wasn't really into Dragon Ball, but I can see like the appeal from like Dragon Ball fans because he would he would uh, they would throw the fireballs the 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 karatekas, uh, and then uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it had such a nice look to it. Um, and uh, like I said, so many like a variety like you could choose uh, eight different guys, and they all like were so unique and cool looking. And I remember, uh, like, ever since I started playing this, arcade, like, I would get my butt kicked by everyone, but I just really liked it. And uh, yeah, my, and I would play with my friends. And I think the only time I beat it was one time a guy walked away from it at M. Bison, and I picked Zangief, and I just, like, would jump kick him and trip him and jump pick, kick him and trip him. And so I, I beat it one time, so I was all proud of myself. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but now, now I can almost, like, get through it without losing a round. But, uh, but, uh, yeah, just my buddies and I playing this and like, line, it was so, there was an ice cream parlor near my high school and my middle school too called penguins. It was just little tiny ice cream 
store and uh, after they had three street fighter two cabinets in there and the kids were just <laughs> packed in there after school, <laughs> all lined up with their quarters up there <laughs> and like there was such anticipation for this to come out on super nintendo this is like why i sold all of the games i had accumulated for my nintendo to <laughs> to get a super nintendo and I didn't realize how cool Super Mario World would be. It was worth it just for that. But I just kind of wanted to get a Super Nintendo for this game, uh, Street Fighter 2. And I know like Vince was saying, it's it's very primitive compared to the newer games, with all the combos and the super moves. But I still like to play this like because it's so simple. And it's kind of easy for me to remember everything. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and like I said... But like it was so much anticipating for this. I think I ordered it from that that that's that uh that company in the magazines. Like it was in EGM. It was called Funko Land. Oh yeah, and we it, had them here. Yeah, I know there was a store, but you, in the magazines that you could order from them, like they had lists of like hundreds of games, and uh, I, I ordered this. And it was such anticipation. I remember I was in. I usually visit my grandparents in Idaho in the summertime. And this thing came uh, to my house when I was up there. So I was like, I was like rushing through my va- nice vacation up there just so I could come home and uh-huh. play this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I got home and played this and I, like, man, it looks so good. Um, w- when you first put it in, it doesn't look as good as the arcade, but after you play it for a little bit, like you forget it's not the arcade. And, and uh, I remember like my, my friends and I were just so obsessed with this. Like we just sit there and play against each other or we take turns fighting the, the, the computer and uh and, and we like this like we didn't know anything about the backstory other than what was in the 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 manual and we would uh, like we thought the characters were so cool like we'd make up our own little stories and make little comics <laughs> about about the backstories of the characters <laughs> and uh, draw little comics and stuff and then another thing like they had the music test on this. I would just sit here and listen to the music test and, and like imagine little stories about, about the like because it's the, the the soundtrack of this is so good. Like there's such catchy little tunes in here. Um, I think that this one, I think the later ones didn't have the music test, but this one did. And just man, Street Fighter Two, just uh, always holds a special place in my my heart. <laughs> That's about it. Did you ever watch the videos where it's like Giles' music goes with everything? Yeah, <laughs> it, it does. It does. Yeah. It yeah. does work somehow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just like you can yeah. put it with anything. Um, yeah. No, I, I love Street Fighter. The it, it's yeah. it's just one of those things that I've I've evolved past it. I mean, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. it's like I can't like knock anybody who likes it. It's it's yeah, such yeah. a pretty iconic series as a whole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anime. Yeah. Heck too. yeah. Anime yeah. is great. That movie is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I like that V series. It's called Street Fighter V, the series, that anime. Yep. yep. Yeah. I got that too. Mm. Loosely sure. based on Alpha. Yeah. Yeah. Or there was the one, is it Alpha? There, the V, I think, was just based on two, wasn't it? it, it they're younger years. Street Fighter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. When they were just like, they got beat up by Guile and then yeah, yeah. Well, we got to go around the world and see if we can oh, beat they everybody up. else so we can beat Guile kind of thing. The and they met up with the guy. Yeah. Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. So, oh, I was gonna say when they do the whole Hadouken, or you know, when they're trying to do it for the first time, they have to do this yeah. stuff like waving yeah, their hands. The, waving their hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember he met up with the god in prison. Yes. So that, yeah. And then. Uh, and then I remember, like, they met Chun and Lee, and she was like a tour guide. And they're all, oh my God, what a babe. Look at her. And then it says, Chun Lee, nice. age 16. <laughs> like, come on, guys. And then she started kicking butt. And then, you know, that's great. Man. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to watch that again, too, now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my number two. Well, I guess it'd be kind of dissimilar to events here. I was going to talk about a Final Fantasy game myself uh, but a much older final fantasy game more so because this is the game that got me into rpgs in the first place uh my friend and i we played a little bit of dragon warrior i'm like this is a weird game uh it's weird i don't know if i liked it then he got final fantasy one for the nes mm. 
we start playing that. He even got the strategy guide and everything. I had that big book there. And um, so every weekend <laughs> after school and things like that, we'll get together, try to get further in the game. And we keep hitting hard spots like the Marsh Cave and uh, the Dark Elf and all this other stuff. But what I enjoyed about the game is the whole adventure. You had the four party system, but you can choose your classes a little bit more and uh, the story was not groundbreaking by any means today by today's mm -hmm. standards but at the time it was very engrossing and kept me going with it too the music Nobu Uematsu mm -hmm. the genius that guy um, just enjoyed the, all yeah. the nods to D&D &D, you know, because it was very heavily inspired by D&D &D at the time which I didn't know at the time, but it was it was really neat to see all these different type of monsters, and I don't know, it's just something about that caught my attention about RPGs, and I'm like, I gotta mm -hmm. go back to Dragon Warrior, I gotta play Zelda, I gotta find uh, every uh, RPG at the time, I was playing Destiny of an Emperor, I was, <laughs> I played RPGs ever since then, so I 30 plus years or more now, of mm -hmm. RPGs in, in my pocket, and I probably beat hundreds and hundreds of them nowadays. Uh -huh. but I cannot get enough of the RPG genre just because, well, first off, it's worth your money. Like you're paying $70, mm -hmm. it's going to be probably 70 hours <laughs> gameplay mm -hmm. on average. Um, it's just something about Final Fantasy just sparked the entire interest in the entire series, and I just kept playing more and more. And whenever two or four, mm -hmm came to play it just skyrocketed even further and became my, my all-time fi uh, favorite final fantasy is for but the first one uh, i the original anyways i will play the like the remake or the pixel mm -hmm. remaster and things like mm -hmm. that but once in a blue moon i'll go back to the first one and just be like you know what i remember where it all started yeah. that nice feeling again um yeah uh, that's why it's number two. Uh, it would have been number one, but there's another reason for number one, and we'll get there in a sec. Uh, was that uh, that music? All the, those iconic little tracks. Did they all start in that game? Yeah. So you got like Wait, your uh, victory fanfare from yeah, part yeah, one. Yeah. You got the crystal theme from part one. Yeah. The Baron of the. That was yeah, from part okay. one when you hit the bridge uh, and yeah. uh, things like that. Um, even had time travel in it, which was very interesting and vicious wow, wow, wow. For RPG. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, fighting chaos at the end, uh, wow. where you had to go into, I believe, the past or was it the future? I don't remember anymore. But uh, you had to go into a different timeline just to beat him, mm -hmm. which was kind of neat. Um. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great game. Well, a lot yeah. of broken problems, like uh, some of the spells don't work the way it should. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Is that something you think I could start now and enjoy it? Like, uh, uh... I don't know if I would recommend the original NES. Uh, no, I, I would say pixel remaster or maybe the ps1 version then go okay. try part one okay uh, it's, or the dawn's of soul game boy advance games yeah game or something games. like that yeah okay, okay because they fix some of the problems uh the level cap is weird too it's 50 mm -hmm. i believe in the original mm -hmm. um instead of 99 like i said some of the spells don't work so if you buy mm -hmm. a spell because you buy spells on that one mm -hmm. it may not work the way you think it's going to work uh i forget which spells but like yeah i think even like spells you get that like you can't even use or like yeah they, they won't even let you buy them even though you're mm -hmm. at the right level for them and stuff it's it's so weird yeah um it's a great game but there's a lot of problems with the first one the original okay. anyways yeah okay but hey if i didn't have that i don't know how where I would be in the whole <laughs> yeah. uh, Final Fantasy or RPGs uh, as RPGs. a whole, mm -hmm. they set the standards for a lot of RPGs of today, especially mm -hmm. when four hit with the active time battle. Mm -hmm. Well, like um, 
my reason for getting into RPGs was because I was playing tabletop games with my dad. So I was like, I was looking for more of that addiction. It's like, yeah. I need to play more RPGs. <laughs> so, mm. uh, you know, playing because I missed Final Fantasy one at first. I played four and uh, six. Actually, six was my first one, then four, then uh, Mystic Quest. But then I was already playing like Seven Saga and all those other Super Nintendo RPGs. Mm-hmm. And of course, when Chrono Trigger came out, that was the game. I mean, oh, it's such mm-hmm. a good game that one. That uh, that set another whole bar in its own right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Chrono Trigger, I see that nice poster in the back. Love that. So cool. <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah right that there. was a, that was a. Uh, so my, we went to a convention and that guy had some painted pixel art. So that's actually painted. Oh, mm. nice. Yeah. That's really looks. So good and well done. Wow, yeah. I didn't realize that it was painted. Wow. And they did it, he did, he did it like pixel style. So it was really cool. I was like, and I asked him, I said, how much would you would you charge to do something like this with like Chrono doing the Luminari? You know, oh, like, yes. That that's my favorite attack. So it's like I, I love to have that as a I'll put this back up right mm-hmm. here, but it'll be really cool. So uh, I guess my number two, of course, I've already talked about was Resident Evil 2. I mean, Resident Evil 1, sorry. Mm-hmm. 2, 2. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, just being a fan of George Romero's zombie franchise and horror movies and like the concept of being able to play a game in 3D like that that we got with that first Resident Evil was just Mm -hmm. mind blowing. Um, The mystery of going into the mansion and figuring out what was going on and then finding out it was a corporation. So it wasn't like these were evil monsters. These were created monsters, which is goes back to that whole thing about with the difference between Silent Hill and Resident Evil is one is man versus creation versus man versus demon, you know, or uh, an evil Mm -hmm. entity that, you know, you may not actually have any chance of actually defeating. Um, but the cast of characters were great. Um, the, you had like this sense of immersion when you're playing it, like the music helped get you into the game. So like when the scares were there, you, you jumped and, mm-hmm. um, the, the friggin uh, what was it? The, the dog keepers research, uh, the, the, his diary. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like, Itchy, itchy Scott came him have ugly face, so I bit it off. Yeah, yeah. Itchy, yeah. Tasty. tasty. <laughs> yeah, that, that's like, what, that, that was like one of the most memorable things I yeah. thought the first time I played that the little uh, researcher's diary here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but like just seeing that the level of detail going into the whole thing about like mm-hmm. reading about the experiment and how how it mm-hmm. went wrong and how the facility decided to not tell people how to handle the situation. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh yeah. You need to put on these hazmat suits after oh, yeah. the, the outbreak, and then yeah. after, it's like, oh, you can take it off. It's it's yeah. already <laughs> um, yeah. the. But then the cool thing was like the leads up to things that were in the game that helped breathe life into Resident Evil Two. You know, like there was mention of Ada in the game. Mm-hmm. Was, um, uh, just other things I can't think of. Yeah, moment. it wasn't Nemesis. It was one of the passwords, right? Yeah. Or was that no? That was two. That was two. Never two. mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was just, her. Yeah, a- Ada was a guy a- or something. Yeah. Like. Yeah. John. Yeah, John. Yeah, that's John it. and Ada. Yeah. Um, and it just like it left this feeling with you that you wanted to play it again. Like mm-hmm. the more I play it, the more I'm going to find into this game. And yeah, yeah. It, it was one of those games that helped me build a bunch of friends. Um, there's a moment that we talked about before, but it's it's just kind of funny. Is that like I'm playing through my game, and I'm at the part where you fight uh, Nim uh, Tyrant, and I, mm-hmm. I and I'm, I'm about to beat the game. My sister's so like she calls my dad up and say, like, "Vince is about the game. He's gonna get in trouble." Yeah. But I was like, <laughs> that's Hell awesome. no, that's my game. He can't beat this game before me. <laughs> and uh, I ended up beating it. But like when he came home, like all of our friends came over and we're like, "All right, Dad, let's go." And he put uh-huh. on. Um, the soundtrack from heavy metal and um what was it 
I can't remember the song he put on, but we, he put it on and he was ready to go. And he was just like, all right, let's do this. And he beat the game. We're like, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, but you know, you, it's one of those things too, is like my dad's like 60. So you think about when this came out, he was what? In his maybe early thirties. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. so, so yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, but no, nah, it's just, it, it brings a lot of nostalgia, you know, especially that whole thing I told you about the back of the instruction manual with all the, the, the things mm -hmm. we used to talk about, like just reading the manual and talk about Edward Dewey. And he was like, who is this guy? He's not even in the game. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, he shows up in zero. Um, me and my friend Andrew would sit there and like talk about the game and figure out how two would work. Yeah. We knew what was gonna happen. And, yeah. uh, we would, we would sit there and go, Oh yeah, we heard this and we we're faking it to each other. Like, it's gonna yeah. be like this part where you're going through the neighborhoods and stuff, and you're going through mailboxes, yeah. and the key and whatever, because we thought it was gonna be a bigger game because it was gonna be in Raccoon City. Mm -hmm. And um, but it's sad that we for two, we only we got the version we got, but I want 1.5 to be finished. I want them to release yeah, be cool. something and just so I can experience because it'd be cool. You think about it, you have it to where 1.5 is about or you could release it as a game that's canonically there is the old police station because they talk about in two that this was originally an art museum. They had just moved there and all mm -hmm. this other stuff. So you could have it to where it's almost like a assault on precinct 13 yeah. kind of movie where it's a group of cops that are dealing with the outbreak while they're at the old police station. And then they find out other ties and all this other stuff. And yeah. you know, it would be great. Mm -hmm. But I honestly but, feel like that's why outbreak should have been, more than what it was you know it was telling mm -hmm. these little stories that was happening when everything was hitting the fan you know yeah. do you guys ever read the novelizations like sd perry it's a female they're really good mm -hmm. yeah but, uh, oh man the, the ones her original stories are freaking awesome but the ones based on the game or like almost like criminally like accurate to the game. Like yes. all the freaking puzzles are there and everything. It's so freaking, I got geeked out so much when I read that. It's almost like reading a, a guide to the game, <laughs> but they're, they're so yeah. good. Yeah. Did y'all ever get the, uh, the magazines that were had like the comic stuff, the stories that were being drawn and everything. I uh, have, I'd have to pull them uh, out. But uh, they retold Resident Evil one in a way where it was like, Jill was telling what happened to her and Chris is like, no, or no, Chris was saying it. And Jill's like, that's not what happened. I was the one who uh, rescued. They played up on this whole thing. That they didn't know what was going on, even though they went through this. So it's like great. they're different versions of the story. It yeah. was really good. Uh, but I'll, I got to pull those out and I'll, I'll post, post pictures okay. and stuff. It's really, really cool. They had some really <laughs> cool stories. There was a one about a kid that figured out how to change the G virus where he can actually make it to where it, you can inject it in yourself turn into the monster but then turn back uh <laughs> and uh umbrella found out about it and they ended up incorporating him into their uh research team so that uh, way he could uh, do stuff but it's not canon anymore but it was at the time whenever they were being written so it's pretty cool. i liked i i wish those books were canon because they had like different side characters that were pretty darn cool oh, in the, in, Cove. Yeah. yeah 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 Oh, that was so good. Like, I wish that would have been a game and not zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. the one part that freaked me out in that book is whenever the zombie actually had a gun and starts shooting at that. Yeah, person. dude, that the was zombie before... could do that. They don't yeah, do that, that was... in the game at the time. Yeah, <laughs> that that was before Resident Evil Five. They're, out, they're the zombies have machine guns. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is uh what is it uh bud or whatever or bub. Oh, and there was a giant or fish Donovan monster. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was like yeah. The dead. Yeah, it, yeah. The, a lot of stuff like kind of foreshadowed. Like there was like a giant fish monster at the beginning in the uh, do it. Yeah, they had the like the facility had different like a uh, 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 like um the facility had like different like um uh, biodomes or something or uh, like there was like a, a desert one and a forest uh, and they had the creatures like I, I think hunters were in one of them right. Yeah, yeah, that was that was cool. It was a lot of fun to read for sure. Yeah, and of course, for number one is Need for Speed Most Wanted, two thousand and five. As you can see, I made it the last three car stuff because I am 
so much into cars. I think most of my life I've dreamt about cars. But the one car I dreamt of, and I want it still. And people have actually built this car in like their shops and stuff. Um, they have like videos on YouTube and stuff of the BMW M3 GTR. They actually build the entire car with the same paint, same spoiler, same body kit, everything. They have to build it themselves, yes, but you know, from projects they do. Wow. Um, it's a lot of I do. I just love this game so much. It, I can't express how much I love this game. <laughs> like <laughs> this one, I this one. If you think about the other ones, like 200 hours is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I played this game since I was probably five. And oh, I'm not five. I don't really know. I, I was a little bit older, but I can tell you right now, I, was, I wasn't I was even in my teens yet when I started playing this game. And I have not stopped. I haven't even beaten the game yet. I, I still have literally used, I think it's, because you can, on PC, it's literally just a file, a save file. You can literally just download a save file that has the percent of the game and just use it. So I'm oh, like, hey, okay. I'll use that. Nice. So yeah. I kind of cheat. That was just one of my favorite games to play. And yeah. I I still play it. I even live streamed it on my channel, I think, like a month ago. I live stream it a lot still on Twitch. I'm, I'm actually trying to beat it without. Oh, um, you got it. Yeah. The file. Yeah. Is it? Uh, it was on the original Xbox, right? Yes, it was on original Xbox. Did you have a? Do you have? Um, does it work on 360? Yeah, they have a 360 version actually. Oh, oh yeah, they um, actually have a. Three, it, it was yeah. like, it was an HD remaster. Yeah. They put it on the system. That would that one I have always wanted to get for my 360. I'll um, keep an eye out for that game. If. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that was one of my favorite uh, games. Yeah. And, uh, that one, I that's the one I played on GameCube. Mm -hmm. That was just the best time right there. Mm -hmm. Number one. <laughs> Drum roll, please. No. <laughs> anyway. Pokemon Blue. Pokemon Blue. <clears throat> this started, this game started so many friendships. Um, again, going back to high school, uh, being on a band bus, uh, you either had red or blue, right? It's almost like which gang are you in? Are you in the red gang or the blue gang? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'd have tournaments on the bus, you know, trade and, and fight. And you knew which kid used rare candies because theirs would lose a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it brought back so many memories. And I remember having notebooks dedicated to uh, how does this Pokemon evolve? How does this Pokemon level up? What moves should it have? Um, you know, what type should i have on my team uh is this random rumor i heard about mew is he hiding in a in a bus behind ss annie or something like that you know mm -hmm. like all these fun things and it brings back so many memories um it's a game that you know stood the test of time they're still making them mm -hmm. and yet the originals are the ones that everyone still loves i was in an accident back in 95 96 um some lady hit a car behind us at a stoplight. They hit into us and then we hit into like two other cars in front of us. Jeez. Uh, it yeah. messed up my dad's back. He had to have some vertebrae free, uh, frozen on him or free, you know, where they oh, man. together. Um, my sister got whiplash. I was okay, but we ended up getting settlement money out of it, but I couldn't get it until I was 18. So one of the things I got was the Pokemon yellow Pikachu edition game boy color with the, the game. So I was always team yellow when I got mine. And I was like, <laughs> it was cool because I started watching the cartoon. And I was like, okay. And that's what was great about yellow it was kind of a following the cartoon versus the games being what started everything we've read in blue. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. There's so many stories I could tell about Pokemon. We could right? do an episode on that. <laughs> I mean, we have how many years of Pokemon at this point that we can oh, yeah. really get into? <laughs> What can oh, you man. think I could start that now? Like, if my wife has both the blue and red. You think I, I would enjoy it now because I was not into turn based, so that kind of like was overwhelming or like it was kind of like intimidating for me back then. But <laughs> you think I would like it now if I got into it? 
I think the, so. The possible. Game, uh, possibly. Did you play yeah. Earthbound? Uh, very little. I, I never beat it. So the style is very similar as far as oh, okay. like, the, yeah. the UI, the world, the characters. Yeah, looks yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Me. Yeah. I don't know um, if it's not as quirky, but <laughs> no, no, it's definitely not as quirky. But yeah, yeah. Uh, the only thing you'd have to worry about is like one of the cool things about Pokemon is that you could transfer your Pokemon to the next generation, and you could do that mm -hmm. up to like I think uh, before the Game Boy Advance, so before uh, Ruby and Sapphire, hmm. okay. and but um, like a cable, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, and then like. Through Game Boy advanced up to like a certain point with the DS, you could do the same thing. But with the new stuff, you can't even really transfer any of that stuff. Hmm. You can only transfer from the newer games up. But yeah. it, it was a cool feature, you know. Like yeah. what I loved about like um Sui Coden, you know, the series is the fact that mm -hmm. you can take your save data, transfer stuff over, and you would have this extra storyline and maybe some bonus characters and maybe some other items. Oh, uh, okay. I love that whole thing where you can just take what you did in the yeah. previous game and add it to the next one. Yeah. I will say, say this, Ty Lord, if you try to get an original cartridge, it's probably going to set you back a little bit. Right. No, my wife has the the red and blue. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I probably wouldn't buy one unless I got like a repro or something. But my wife has I'm wondering if, if it's something I could get into now. Well, there's now ways that I to like, play it. Yeah. yeah. There's ways to play them. Uh, I believe... Yeah. Like, isn't it like you can play yellow? I think, well, I think they're going to be porting them all to the uh, virtual consoles. So. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah they well, were. Maybe I'll videos. give them a chance. I haven't played much of the Pokemon uh, RPGs and I've been mm -hmm. wanted to give them a shot. They're good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of like rock, paper, scissors in a way because of like the different types of Pokemon against the yeah. other types of Pokemon. And then, um, but they're really good RPGs. Uh, and so there's like a story to them, right? Or is it mm -hmm. just uh, you just try to get your guys as powerful? But there is like a can you like you can beat the game, right? Yeah. Or is it just keep going? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. No, there's there may be some okay. in-game content, but usually okay. in those first few games, there's not much. You just beat the Elite Four and it's over. I mean, oh, then, you okay. can, then you can go and try to like collect the first okay, 20, okay. 51 Pokemon. Okay. Yeah, they, they, there's there's a guy in the game that encourages you to collect all 150. I think you they okay. give you like a certificate at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll do my number one now. Then one that came up earlier, Jason had it for number ten. <laughs> Here we go. What do you think of that? Super Mario Three, Super Mario Brothers Three, NES. Like I can't really put anything above this because this is like this, this is like the like my childhood right here like as much as i like mario one and two like the hype was at a, the, its peak at this point because like uh, mario one like that was already awesome and then the hype was up high for mario two and then by that time like the hype was really up for this one and uh i like even with that movie the wizard like we, we all went and watched the wizard because of this game and it turned out to be a pretty good movie too but but like uh, uh, just everyone and not just m myself, everyone was was hyped about this. Like it was something we all everyone joined together, <laughs> kind of like the Mario advertisement. Mario, Mario. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's how that's how it was. Um, and like it delivered to like the hype, uh, like everyone was so hyped for this. Like I was saying earlier, I. I pre-ordered it at, at a Circuit City or the Good Guys, one of those, and I would call them every day. Did Mario Three come in? Like I should have known when they're when it's supposed to come out, but they go, "No, we'll call you when it, when it comes in." I just would call them every, <laughs> and I think they had the same problem with other kids would call them. And uh, yeah, the one day I think on my birthday, the day of my birthday, they said it was going to come in. And it didn't, but I, by then I was cool with it. Like, okay, I'll just wait. And then, cause I got like Ninja Turtles one uh, for my birthday and I, and I go, it's cool. I'll just wait. So I, I was like ready. I had my heart set like, okay, I'll just wait for it. I'll be patient. But then that night, like they called and said, yeah, your Mario three is in <laughs> or, or no, you know what it was? Uh, they didn't call me. I ended up just like calling a different store. Like it was called the good guys. 
And I said, do you guys know when Super Mario 3 is coming in? Because mine's not coming in at Circuit City. Probably. I go, no, we have it right now. And I go, oh, I'm going to come get it. And, my, and then I was like putting on a big scene. They had my parents go, <laughs> go over there. And we had to take the money out of the one at Circuit City and, and go get it there. But but uh, but like the hype, like right when you put this thing in, you know, it's something special. And I didn't know at the time, but it had that um, extra, it had extra chips in here to do stuff like you can, it can do the horizontal and vertical scrolling at once. Like before, if you noticed all the Mario's would either scroll forward or up, like mm -hmm. you couldn't do both at the same time. This one's like Mario world where, where it would scroll up and down, but I didn't notice that at the time. I just thought it was awesome. And, and the freaking music was really good. Like it had the, the timpani drums in it. It was so freaking good. All the level designs, um, as simple as they may look now, they're all unique. Every little level has something unique about it. And they're all pretty short, every level, but but they're very satisfying uh, um, levels in this game. And there's it, it felt so big compared to the other games. Like there's eight worlds with like up to 10 or 12 levels in each world and an overhead map. Like this game, uh, everyone was so hyped about it. And the funny thing is about this game, I didn't realize it until this year I was thinking about it. This was, it, it was released only a year before Mario World, right? Yeah, I believe so. Like, and this thing had such an impact on us. It felt like it was just like part of our lives for years. Oh yeah, you're right. But, but well, it's hard to believe like Mario World came out the year after this. Like it, it felt like that year of this must have had a huge impact because I think of this like being the top dog for, like my whole childhood, but it was only like one year. <laughs> yeah, so Mario 3. Uh, oh, yeah, perfect game. I always thought the Mario games had the best gameplay, and this one's probably on top, like this in Mario World, like just so smooth, like as good as Mega Man and Castlevania are, this thing, like he can jump and stop on a dime, and he can change trajectory in the air, like, and you can press, that's so satisfying to press that B button to run. Like you get up acceleration. <clears throat> I just thought like this was like the best of platforming here and, and all the new moves like Jason was talking about. You get the Hammer Brothers suit like the Hammer Brothers had always been picking on you so much in the first game. And now you can get their <laughs> suit and, and give like, it back. to them. <laughs> yeah. And the Tanuki flying around and the, the frog suit lets you swim good. It's yes. just, yeah. 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 I yeah, love it. I thought the last the last world was pretty challenging in this. I don't think it's the toughest game in the world, but some of those levels on the the world eight are pretty challenging. Mm -hmm. Number one, there was two games I was thinking about. One was Fantasy Star Four, fantastic game, and made me want mm -hmm. to get the Genesis. Mm -hmm. But there was another game on the Genesis that holds a little bit more meaning to me, and it kind of funny that you had that story about that Final Fantasy XI because this game also helped me out too with my current girlfriend. Oh, now. excellent. <laughs> um, so a few years back um, I was watching a bunch of streamers and I noticed this one streamer uh, on, well, now that it's known X, uh, I heard about uh, the Love Fantasy Star 4. I'm like, oh, I'm going to check them out. Maybe they'll be playing that game. Turns out they were playing Shining Force 2, the other game I really like from Genesis. And turned out to be, um, she's Esper's Dreams. Uh, she plays on Twitch and streams on Twitch at the time and hopped into the chat. We were, I was just talking and talking. We were gelling so much during that time frame that, um, it was like as if we known each other for years. And after that night, we kept on talking through DMs and talking and talking every day for like a good week or two. And then we're like, maybe we should, you know, take it to the next level. So ever since then, Shining Force 2 became an extra special place in my heart because I met the love of my life and um even though i did play it back in the day but uh <laughs> shining force 2 an amazing game in its own right uh love the cast of characters as well and um great gameplay 
reminded me a little bit of like playing tactics and the way the uh, strategies uh, RPG, mm. which is a different RPG style that I like too. Um, great music, great gameplay. Just, I don't know what else I can say about it other than uh, if you haven't played it, give it a shot. Um, but it also brought me to somebody I really deeply care about. And it's just, it's amazing that you mentioned something very similar, Vince, and I'm like, really? <laughs> what? <Dude. laughs> I have this coming up too. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things that it's really cool. And that's why I like like the whole YouTube thing sometimes with, with people we meet is that there's a connection that, you know, some of the things that we have happened to that just happened like exactly the same, or it may be something completely <laughs> different. It's like, we wouldn't have known that if we weren't somehow connected through mm -hmm. videos mm -hmm. or streams or um, playing games together, you know, mm -hmm. you, you meet people mm -hmm. from across the world all the time. And, you know, you would have never done that had you not been playing a game or doing something that resonates, that brings you all together, regardless if it's a girlfriend mm -hmm. or a friend. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I met a lot of people through just the streaming community, such as all of you and uh, many yeah. others, but I didn't expect what happened to happen, and I'm just happy that it did. Oh, excellent! Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah. No, Shining Force is great, man. I I I got Shining Force two for my birthday when it came out and stuff, and I played the hell out of that game. I got oh, stuck okay. actually at the point where you what to fight Achilles or whatever that the statue. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, it's like right after you get the boat and you're kind of going down the river and stuff, and like. I could not figure out what I needed to do because something wasn't triggering in my game. And it was like years later when I got it again. I was like, all right, maybe it was just my cart. You know, because sometimes you could get that. Yeah, that's, that's possible. But mm -hmm. uh, I love how that game opened up with uh, like if you don't press uh, the start button or anything, you just see Slate uh, going to yes. do his thieving. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I like this character. He's pretty cool. And became one Steals of the favorites. gems and then they get put on his back and, or in yep. the back of his neck. And it's like, oh, yeah. And then you got you got uh, the Gamera character. What was his name? I usually called him the turtle, the one that once he evolves, like he flies at the, at the enemy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 A lot of characters you can get, not mm. quite as much as like sweet code in them, but like uh, mm. I think about 20, uh, nearly 20 characters in the game or something like that. I, I forget. Yeah. My number one is Quest for Glory, uh, the RGV version, um, the one that didn't have all the tech type the text to what you're going to do. It was so cool because there were so many reference meta references to other things going on. Like you had the dad from the dinosaurs walking in the forest. You you mm -hmm. had other characters from other pop culture that happened and the humor was so good and that's it's a testament to like the storytelling and why people loved sierra games at the time um but it was a really cool rpg that you would just kind of go in click and point you'd actually fight creatures and then you'd solve puzzles but it was really awesome because you could take your save data once you beat the game to the next one and then you could play a paladin and then uh. or you would have the bonuses of what you had from the previous game in the new one. Um, sad thing is they never did a RGB version of two. So that was a rough, I had to play through with a strategy guide, but I played three, three was fantastic. And four was great. Five of course was a hot mess, but um, I haven't played that one. I played three and four, but yeah, definitely five was, one or two. <laughs> yeah. Three's great. It is really good. You definitely should, give it some time but uh yeah uh, it's one of the things i played with my dad and a lot a lot of the things that i talked about at first were things with my father so mm -hmm. um but yeah i i love that game and it was a pc game all right guys thank you for for hanging out and oh it's great sharing these stories yeah. i love it yeah, yeah thank, thank you, you for having us yeah mm -hmm. sorry if i dragged that on a little too long <laughs> no it's okay i mean it, it <laughs> It's okay. I yeah. it's part of the conversation, you know. Sometimes yeah. we, we get in the heat of the moment of uh, what we are passionate about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very interesting to, like you said, the people we've met over the internet. You know, um, it, I, I don't know if you guys remember Slanko Bomb. Uh, she, me, and her actually became good friends over uh, talking about Pokemon. You know, 
things that we did as kids that we thought would help the game, but doesn't really help the game. Like <laughs> when you throw a pokeball, you push down on the D pad. It yes. doesn't work. It doesn't help. Yeah, yeah. But in your mind <laughs> as a gamer, that helps, right? Mm -hmm. And so you connect on those things. So hearing your experiences through these games, hearing your stories through these games, I think uh, really helps bring a gaming community closer. You know, uh, again, I've learned about some games I've never even heard of before, and I'm going to mm -hmm. look into these games and, and, and yeah. see more about them, you know, mm -hmm. but uh it's been fun. Like I've had a blast. Oh awesome. heck yeah! Same Thanks, here. guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to. I want to do more with the community because I, I know that sometimes we have topics that are all over the place. You know, we talk about movies <laughs> and things, and it's like mm -hmm. I assume just as a nerd that like you know most nerds are going to gravitate to these things, and sometimes we niche down. You know, it's like we. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I think we we forget how similar we are, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, why we we we're passionate about these things. And yeah, of course, we're gonna have things that we we don't we don't mesh with or we don't agree on. But it's really great to hear someone's perspective, and it may win somebody over that wasn't there before, you know. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So Definitely. and and I'll just say this real quick: a Pokemon MMO would have been fantastic. Yeah. But, uh, that would be the only game I play ever after that point. But, <laughs> um, but all right, everyone, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Uh, of course, um, me giving the goodbyes here are a little weird because we have, uh, you know, Halo Kid missing, but uh, he did give his list. So we hope you enjoyed his commentary and stuff. And we will uh, see y'all next weekend. Until then, have a great one, guys.